Hello, hello. <clears throat> Check one, two. Testing. Uh, testing. Just give me a minute here. <clears throat> What is up guys, Dashing here for episode 267 of Community Universe Mode and edition number 66 of Thursday Night Genesis, the go-home show for this Sunday's validation pay-per-view. And of course, showcasing it, headlining that event is the massive 7-on-7 seven -seven Tug of War match, a first in CMV's illustrious nearly four-year history. The Battle of the Brands meets its end. And speaking of the Battle of the Brands here tonight, uh, live as always, an action pad card. We have not one but two cross-brand matchups to get them, get ourselves pumped up and ready for this Sunday's events. And starting things off, going to be some tag team action as the Warriors Justice from Fusion, Bloody Justice, and MJ Warrior traveling over here to take on the new faces of fear, Father Victor and Mark and Sal. Back in the uh, tag team cup, little squibble between these two teams started when new faces of fear fell out on the tag team cup bloody justice took to twitter to say that mark and tell and father victor aren't aren't true darkness they're they're false idols fake he pretty much called them and father victor responding by challenging the young duo to a matchup what's up everybody echo Mori Gumble, Borton Dynamic. Oi, oi, welcome to the stream. Of course, MJ Warrior, last time we saw them in action, I believe, was the night after the Tag Team Cup, a six-man tag team bout, which they lost. But before then, remember that huge upset victory that they uh, secured over the Tag Team Champions, the Blood Brothers. What up, Topher? I sabotaged it. It's true, Topher, because he can't be streaming on the same day as me. You feel me? Nah, the Father Victor and Mark and Tell are hard lines. What up, Hellish? <laughs> Big 267, though, guys. Nearing 300. Not nearing. Probably be still a good couple of months. But still, we are coming up on our two-year anniversary, though. Real-time two-year anniversary. Versity. Blah, blah, blah. On the uh, 31st of December. Definitely going to be a big blowout special for that. What day is the 31st land on? If someone can whip out a calendar real quick on their phone or something. If it lands on a Fusion or Genesis day, that's good. But no matter what day it lands on, I'll probably still stream that day. Oh. Almost forgot entrances. <laughs> I mean, there's no rule against level 2 resiliency, Gumble. Get good, kid. Wow, cop confirming a buff for Akane. Just let him die, all right? 
It falls on Saturday. That's not, yeah, that's, a, that's an alright day stream. So the 31st, Saturday, going to be the big blowout two-year anniversary special. This Sunday, of course, is also Roadblock. I'm going to try to stream probably a couple hours beforehand, so validation wraps up not too far into the pay-per-view. I'll probably start at like 4, 4 or 5. I will uh, begin validation, which is this Sunday, but starting off a great episode of Genesis comes Fusion's Bloody Justice and MJ Warrior. Tonight's main event going to be that second cross-brand matchup, a competition between two old foes as Ryan Kent defends his home turf against the undisputed champion of Monday Night Fusion, Justin Sane. New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, New Year's Eve. Shit. New Year's Eve and the two-year special. Gonna be uh, gonna be real lit, fam. <laughs> I began CMV on New Year's Eve. It's a neat little tidbit. Cop's gonna be in the uh, stream with me. Cop, you gotta do commentary with me on the two-year anniversary. <laughs> Echo with the big host. The auto host, Big Eck, bless. The Big Red Machine, the man of many nicknames. We got Big Red Machine, Marky Moo, Archangel, the True Dark Lord, the Big Red Machine. I think I said that one already. Uh, the True Dark Lord, Archangel, Marky Moo, the Big Red Machine, making his way down here, accompanied by his, I guess, uh, what would you call Father Victor? His his leader, I guess Mark Toe really a follower of the father. Been indoctrinated, you could say. I did hear Topher's voice that one time he joined the party for like 10 minutes. But he was hard to hear. And these two men were actually undefeated until the Tag Team Cup where they lost out in the uh, first round to the New Gods. And that's when Warriors Justice would begin talking all that ish on Twitter. Wow, Borton with the big host. All these fat hosts coming in. As we begin this matchup, and bloody justice right out of the gate. Gonna land a massive DDT on the father. Also coming up here tonight, guys. Not our only tag team match. Big six-man tag action coming up a little bit later on. As Heaven or Hell will be pairing up with the undefeated Kaiva. See if we can keep that up. As they battle uh, his foe, Bryce Hurt, and the World Tag Team Champions extreme conditions we've also got co-captain Bob Luger in action he'll be battling Killjoy rematch from last week this time we'll get to see it live as Andrew Briggs battles Elijah Stewart attacked a Mark Intel now here comes the big man and these two colliding of course at ascendance earlier this year in that six-man tag team match stealing the, the the slate walk slam right there what a dirty dirty thief Oh, Suntan in the stream. Tis been a while since Big Pickles has made his way uh, into a CMB stream. MJ Warrior, now the legal man. Bloody justice not done just yet, though, as he gets off a nice powerbomb to Marky Moo. Again, guys, validation this Sunday. The Battle of the Brands meets its culmination. After what happened on Monday Night Fusion with Genesis retaliating to Fusion's invasion of uh, last week's Genesis edition, we saw Pierre Thompson and John Reed beat down Desolation after that main event cage match. And of course, we saw Ryan Kent was roaming around the backstage halls. He actually had a, a run-in with Schmitty. If I was a betting man, I'd, I'd put some chips down that we're going to see something go down here tonight before the pay-per-view. That seven-on-seven seven tug of war match, guys. The first ever in CMV. Fusion versus Genesis. Johnny Sampson versus Dave Turner. Turner's job on the line. You're going to want to see it. Not just that. That's not our only brand warfare match. We've got Chris Andrews of Fusion defending his Anarchy title against Genesis' Zach Cage and Randy Borton. 
putting his international title on the line against the Boa Azriel. We could see possibly the title switch brands. Maybe two titles go to one brand. It's going to be a good show, no doubt. And a tag here to Mark Tultz. Look at that. I'm just going to open his arms out wide. Wow, Maury not a big Extreme Conditions fan. How do you think Zaquette's going to feel about that? Well, we did see Heaven or Hell with that shock upset defeating Extreme Conditions last week. They're going to look to further prove they got one last championship run in them, that six-man tag a little bit later on. Jawbreaker there by the father. Looks like he needs a little bit of sun, some vitamin C. Nice. Forearm smash right to the jaw. Oh, and a spinning sit-out powerbomb just stole Bloody Justice's sig right there. Oh, but he's not finished. Irish Whip now going to put him in the corner. Are they going to try for the tag fin? No, it's a regular tag right here. <clears throat> what the hell are they doing? Are they setting up for a figure four? Oh, a kick right to the knee. My God. Because you're saying you want new faces of fear to be the tag team champions. That means you want extreme conditions to lose the titles. That means you're not a big fan. Mari. Mark until now in control. Bloody Justice's knee in a bad way. He's going to try to make the tag here, but MJ Warrior too busy taunting to the crowd. Might have just screwed BJ as he's put into the corner from behind. Catch the big elbow, though. Justice ain't done yet. Irish whip now into the corner. Dashig. These frequent tags by New Faces of Fear. What do we got here? Oh, double knee to the spine. Oh. <laughs> I thought Bloody Justice was trying to hit a bulldog there. We'll wear a bulldog. Nice suplex, though, from Victor. Dashig. That is my real name. Oh, Father Victor with that capture suplex. Great teamwork on display by the new faces of fear defending their territory against the Warriors' Justice of Fusion. And now they're going to look to finish tag to Markintel. Going to toss the limp body of Justice right into the arms of the big red machine. Puts him in position for that tombstone pile drive. Here's Victor off the ropes. Bam! Drives him head first into the canvas. Markintel shoots for the pin. One, two, three, and that's all she wrote. Father Victor tried to stop MJ Warrior. Obviously ended up being successful despite Warrior countering him into a crossbody. But the new faces of Fear Guys, great teamwork on display. They defend their territory, driving back Fusion's Warrior's justice. What a victory after that nasty assisted tombstone pile driver. And there was the finish, that tombstone pile driver. Here you see Father Victor stop MJ Warrior. He countered it into a crossbody, but too little, too late. New faces of fear. Now four and one, I believe, this season. <laughs> Big new faces of fear fan is Echo. Certainly doing very well this season. I'd see a future title shot coming these guys way but again heaven or hell seem to be number one contenders after that win last week we'll find out a little bit later on in that six man tag and here's a tweet guys from Jamari Williams of Fusion and he says all you who have lonely boring Fridays without CMV you can catch me on my talk show The Sneak Peek as I interview former international champion Azriel only on the CMV Network. So the sneak peek making its return. I'm excited for that. Jamari Williams going to have on the Boa Azriel fusion superstar now who's going to try to take the international title over with him as he challenges Randy Borton this Sunday. Paul Heyman's gone, rip in peace. Heyman had more important things to attend to, it seems, than uh, accompanying Bison to his return match. <laughs> but of course, Sean Silva has Big Murdoch in his corner. This match coming our way after Bison 
made his return last week on Genesis. Remember, he was out, out of action for over a month. Was attacked at CyberSlam by Rise, beat him down, made that shoulder. You see, he's still taped up. Uh, attacked him brutally with a steel chair. Did Murdoch, actually. Murdoch's the one who hit him with the steel chair. Um, that wasn't the only attack on Bison, of course, or Duo Maxwell. But nonetheless, Bison ended up luckily not needing surgery. And even though I would say maybe give him another month to recuperate, Bison says no way after what happened to Duo Maxwell in Tokyo, Japan. Remember, he was forced to defend the World Tag Team titles in a handicap situation after Bison couldn't make it to Japan. And uh, he subsequently ended up losing not only that, though later on in the night, a mystery man, a hulking behemoth, came barging out of Duo Maxwell's locker room, leaving him in a heap. And, uh, of course... Suffering a shoulder injury, much like Bison's, this led Bison and Paul Heyman to believe that it was indeed Rise who were behind the attack. Sean Silva denies it with all his heart and soul that it was not Rise. If they wanted to make a statement, they would have done it publicly. They wouldn't have sneaked around the back like cowards. But Bison doesn't believe it, so the Barbarian challenging the leader of Rise to his debut match here tonight. We're going to get to see them one on one as we get a series of tweets here. First from Wolfman, who says, Woof, 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 you know it, dog. Hashtag soon. And following that up is Razor Windu, who says, At Wolfman, boom. And then El Jefe says, Arriba. <laughs> you guys do not want to miss the debut of the tag team Domestic Wolves, Man Wolf, and the returning Razor Windu next Monday on Fusion. As here we get a tweet from Paul Devine, guys. And Paul Devine says, backstage checking out the competition for my fellow Fusion brothers. Yeah, they're going to wish they had the new gods in their corner. Samson, you idiot. We heard how salty Paul Devine was on Fusion about his boy Reese Matthews not being put on team uh, Samson for that seven-on-seven -seven tug of war match at Validation this Sunday. Paul Devine going to be busy battling Nick Blake in a false count anywhere match. Yeah, that, that, we got a pretty tight house show here tonight as well. Live event, El Jefe and his singles return. Of course, returning to tag team match last week, which he, which he lost, but he battles the masked man, Salvi. The Misfits who debuted last week uh, in, in winning fashion. Going to be battling power and glory. And we're also going to see Nikolai Ivanovich, the light heavyweight champion, take on Bob Storm. And here comes Rise. This is Sean Silva who is making his in-ring debut, usually ringside for his boys, Sebastian and Murdoch, and uh, Nicola, of course. <laughs> El Jefe wasn't the one pin in that tag match, was he? It was Max Flax, so technically, I guess, if you want to be real technical about it, he didn't lose. I believe this is Braun Strowman and Eric Rowan, one of the Wyatt ones as the massive Sean Silva just stepped over the top rope. He's a pretty big guy. Put him out, what, like 6'5 or something? All going to glide over that beanie, the beanie club. And, of course, Sean Silva, knowing that Paul Heyman would be ringside for Bison, said he's going to be bringing Murdoch, but apparently Paul Heyman's not going to be ringside. He's got, like I said, more important things to attend to, it seems, as Bison's going to make his return to the ring solo. If anybody doesn't need a manager, though, it's the Barbarian, the CMV veteran, the beast, the original monster. Oh, no, there's Paul Heyman. who's just invisible on the match card. So Paul Heyman is here. One of the greatest, if not the greatest, managers of all time. Back alongside his original client. And here comes Bison. You see that mass just sends chills up and down your spine. And remember... The shoulder's still heavily taped here. That's obviously going to be a target. Face painted beanie Brit. <laughs> Who knows how long Duo Maxwell will be out of action for. Bison could be looking... Another solo run, dead in the face. He can start it off the right way here tonight. Like I said, I think he should have taken another month to at least fully recuperate, but he wanted vengeance for his fallen comrade. And here's a tweet from Schmitty, guys, of Fusion, uh, who, see, who, who seems to think that he's the captain 
uh, despite it being just insane. Actually, he says, "Ill Bison, brush your teeth." Classic Schmitty. Right out of the gate, Sean Silva taken to the canvas. As the Barbarian goes to work, that slick new attire on Murdoch ringside there. Leg drop by Double S. Paul Heyman with that great hairdo going on. Knee to the back of the head. Smart by Silva there. The exposed part. That hard plastic mask ain't protecting him. And now Silva going to go for the pin. Lateral press. Could this be it already? I don't think so. Yeah, not even a one count. Let's see. What the hell is Silva doing? <clears throat> Empire Payne had that slick three-month run with the titles, all right? As Bison now with a big old power bomb. Gotta wonder if it was both members of Empire Payne, if Extreme Conditions even would have walked out of Tokyo with the tag belts. I gotta give props to Duo Maxwell, though. He didn't back down. He said, it's gonna take an army to get these belts off of me and ended up just taking two guys, but still those, the number game, the numbers game coming back to bite him in the end. As Bison distracted by Murdoch here. Can't believe a veteran like Bison would fall for that. So we're gonna try to capitalize. Goes for a dragon suplex and still gonna eat an elbow right to the face. And then big old sidekick to the ribs. Gonna suck the air right out of him. Oh, matter of time already. Into the pin goes Bison. Could this be it? One. Oh, just a one count. Bison ain't playing around tonight, baby. Off the ropes now. Big old splash. Bison, 300 pounds of pure mass as he looks to finish off double S already. The Bison bomb into the pin. One. Two. Oh, wait a minute. Big Murdoch ringside ripping out the referee. Allowing Sean Silva to stay alive. That probably would have been it, if you ask me. And he's not ejected either. The ref taking leniency here. Sean Silva getting decimated. Look at Silva's like, ah, I don't know about this. Oh, Sean Silva, guys, grabbing a steel chair. But this isn't an ODQ match. This is a singles match, guys. If he hits that chair on Bison, this match will be over. But Bison having none of it. He ain't going to let Sean Silva take the cheap way out. Sean Silva trying to get himself disqualified, saying, I'm not taking any more of this, man. I'm getting killed in here. And that steel chair now looking ominous. The referee's got to get out of here. I think Sean Silva's going to try to go back to it as soon as he gets an opening. There's a Mishinoku driver. The distraction seems to have worked, though, because now he's in control all over the Barbarian. Fish drop connects right to that mask. Now going to get him in the head scissors as he hammers away with some elbows. Trying to crack that thing open like a coconut. Sean Silva absolutely dead right now. Can barely breathe. There we go. The ref finally finds the steel chair. Gets it out of here so Silva can't pull that ish. Look at the strength of the Barbarian. With that schoolboy powerbomb into the pin. Just a two count though. Silva able to stay alive. And Bison just feeling it, man. He wants revenge. He's going to get it no matter what it takes. Elbow to the ribs. Backs himself up. Spinning... Uh, forearm smash. Was that a Euro I think it was European up. It was forearm smash. I couldn't really tell from that angle. <clears throat> oh, XOS! I don't know if that's a... I think that might be a SIG because we've never seen Silva in action before, so I have no idea what his, his maneuvers are, but that seemed like a signature. It was because now he's going for the fin, sizing up Bison, going to turn things around, get the win for Rise. What a win it would be. What's he going to go for here? Small package driver. One, two... Just a two count, though. Going to take a whole lot more than that to put down the likes of the CMV Season 1 veteran. But Double S is now firmly in control. Certainly turned the tides. Was not going his way the, the start of this one. As it goes for another power bomb, Maybe a second Bison Bomb. I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> Busts him open somehow with an arm drag. Oh, shucky, ducky, quack, quack, bison in the corner, sizing up Sean Silva, looking for that spear, going to cut him in half, and there it is, floors him. An absolute tank of a man is bison, but he ain't done, brother. Going to look to break his own record, go for a power bomb. He's only hit one so far in this match. Sean Silva, every chance he gets, lateral press, just a one count. Sean Silva taunting. 
as if he's been completely in control throughout this one. Bison takes him overhead. Paul Hammond loving the way this one's going. Oh, look at these stomps down to the chest. Curve stomps. Just trying to put a hole right through him. <laughs> Double leg takedown by Sean, who's just trying to stay alive. <laughs> Bison drops out of the scoop. Slam attempt. Stop down to the back of the quad. Could he look to finish? He's making a mistake by not going for that bison bomb. Sit out suplex slam. And another pin attempt by Double S here. The leader of Rise trying to finish every opening he gets. <clears throat> Ace Stevens attack duo, Maxwell. So let's be honest, guys. <clears throat> Bison backing up into the corner for another spear. Ah, oh, he's trying to go for that power bomb time and time again, but Silva's just not letting him get it off. Wow, that reversal was slick there by Double S. A slap to the chest. Sean's feeling it. Going to try for another SIG here, perhaps. Yes, he is. SOS one more time. Could he pull off the upset? One, two. No, only a two count. The Barbarian will not die, and what a hook right to the jaw. He's going to the corner again, looking at Paul Hammond saying, it's time to break. It's time to snap him in two. Going for the legs again. Only keeps going for that, though. It's going to end up screwing him. He's pulling He's pulling a bludgeon at the Tag Team Cup. Just keeps going for the same move over and over again. How about that belly to belly? Taking him overhead. Keeps like, oh, Bison right in front of Murdoch. He's pretty far away, though. Oh, spear! A second spear. Might do it in for Silva. One, two, three. No, what? How is that not? Oh, shit. Sean Silva somehow surviving the second spear, but he ain't going to survive this. Another bison bomb. No, takes him overhead. Does Silva... With that clutch counter, if he got hit with that second bison bomb, it'd be over. One, two. Both these men don't want to die. Oh, what's this from Silva? Future Shock DDT. Now, Sean not going to go for the pin, though. Bison just straight no selling it like a pro. Goes to the jumping cutter, but Justin Saints here tonight, so nobody else is allowed to hit that. Silva trying to go for a finisher. I think Bison too quick for him, though. Another sit-out powerbomb. One, two, just a two-count. Oh, dear Lord. The Barbarian perched in the corner. A third spear floors him, man. Dragging away from the ropes. Sean's lifeless carcass here. One, two, three. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Bison is getting absolutely furious. If I were this referee, I'd be fearing for my life right now. The Barbarian gonna try to seal the deal. Oh, goes for a fourth spear, but Sean Silva steps out of the way. And then disrespectful, just a kick to the side of the head. A second Future Shock DDT, what a match. Murdoch, I think, has learned his lesson after nearly getting ejected at the start of this one. Sean Silva looking for a second small package driver, but Bison with the clutch reversal. Oh, my God. And now it's taken up to the military press, drops him right down into a single knee gut buster. Oh my God, don't do it, Bison. A fifth spear, a fifth spear. Cuts him, oh, he countered it. Yo, it's so clutch in this match. And so it was like, yeah, I'm a fucking G, dude. Wasting his time taunting though, too full of himself. That eagle gotta get him in trouble. Bison now back to his feet, back body drop. Five spears and a bison bomb. Silva has eaten this one. Two future shocks 
two SOSs and a small package driver. Bison has taken. This match is crazy. The amount of SIG and Finn reversals as well is just nuts. European up by that Silva. Oh, too quick for Bison. Catches him with a third. Butterfly DDT. That has got to be it. Not going to go for the pit. No, why does he keep taunting, talking that ish to Paul Heyman instead? And this gives the opportunity for Bison to recuperate. Short arm, shoulder block near. Takes him right out of his own skin. As into the corner goes the Barbarian. Looking for that fifth spear one more time. Spear! 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 No! He countered it again! This time with an elbow. Bison running face first right into an elbow. My God. Bison making him his bitch with that backhand. And now a power bomb. That's only the second one of this match, if you believe it. Don't know if he's going to be able to break his own record at this point. Of uh, eight in a single match. Oh, there's matter of time. Bison says enough with the spears. One. Two. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is this match, dude? Just no selling in the matter of time. Rick of the Eye Silva going for the finisher. Bison clutching. Spear! A fifth time. Oh my god. Pin him. Pin him, Bison. Is it too late though? I think it might be too late. One, two, three. No, it was too late. Bison wasted too much time. He was too tired, too hurt to get to the pin. Oh, and there's the crack of the night. There's the crack of the neck, I should say. Bison letting us know it's the real deal. Sean Silva with the boot to the side of the head. That classic Bison belly-to-belly -belly slash hip toss maneuver. Oh, here's a third power. Oh, third. Fourth. And a fifth power bomb. Just three away from tying his record. I don't think Bison's concerned with that, though. Goes for another jumping cutter. What a hook. Seatbelt suplex takes Silva down. Why? We don't know the skill level of Silva. This is his debut. Spent many years in CB's developmental. Obviously has talent how he's going with Bison right now. This match is nuts. Another big splash. This time into the pin. Could 300 pounds down to the chest be enough to get it done? No, it is not. Both men kind of just staring at each other, astonished that they can't put one another down. Oh, matter of time! A third go at it. One, two, just a two count. And Bison says, I've had enough. Letting everyone know it's time to go. Sizing him up. Bison... Gonna go for a second bison bomb, and he gets it into the pin. One, two. What? Is this a Topps Newsom match? Why won't one of these guys die? How did he kick out of a second bison bomb, dude? How? Let me pull a Batman. How? What the hell, dude? Belly to belly by the Barbarian. This is absolutely nuts. Bison says, I'm going to break him. Oh, my goodness. Two Bison bombs, five spears, three matters of time, a fourth matter of time. Got to be it. One, two, three, and Bison gets it. My God, man. Got to give it up to Silva. Gotta give it up to Sean Silva. What a showing, but Bison was determined to walk out with the win, man. What a victory for the Barbarian. I don't think anything's able to top that for match of the night, match of the week. Five spears. Four matters of time. Two bison bombs is what it freaking took to win this match.
Holy Kamoli. And Bison, who did it not, it's not like Bison took no damage. He ate, what, three Future Shocks, two SOSs, a small package driver. There's that fourth matter of time, though, that finally did it in. The Beast is back, ladies and gentlemen. Got them Cobros hacks. That fucking modded controller Suntan's using. Whew. We still got so much to get to. Up next, guys. I think I got the card on the uh, the, the match um, line up wrong in the card. So the six man tag is next after this one. <clears throat> It'll be Heaven or Hell and Kaiva versus Bryce Hurt and Extreme Conditions. But first, we have the most recent signee to the CMB Genesis roster and John Bateman, the chosen one, looking to uh, snatch up that big old win. In his first matchup against Jeremy Blake. <laughs> and we all know it is uh, no secret that Jeremy Blake has been doing very, very poor this season. I think he's 0-7 maybe at this point. Hellish will have to confirm. But uh, for such a you know a CMB veteran, the first ever Anarchy champion, the second ever longest reigning international champion, Jeremy Blake, a staple in CMB's history. To see him doing so bad this season, it kind of hurts to someone like me who's a big fan. It's hard to stand in his corner anymore. He's going to try and turn that around here tonight, but Blake just might have to learn that maybe his time has come and gone. Maybe he's just, he can't hold up with the new talent. Can he whip out that Randy Borton-esque golden shovel and put Bateman in the ground? Like I said, will the chosen one get that uh, big old debut uh, victory? Certainly put him up to beat someone like Blake. Here he comes, the chosen one, John Bateman. Arriving on Genesis. Just days away from validation, ladies and gentlemen. This Sunday, you do not want to miss it. An absolutely stacked card from top to bottom. That seven-on-seven tug-of-war match, Battle of the Brands, headlining the show. That MVP streak? What does that mean? MVP loses a lot of something. John Bateman amped up and ready to go here. <clears throat> Whoa, guys. A tweet here from the Bloody Brit of Fusion says, Savage, you say my reign doesn't matter. Savage, when you do something relevant, then you can bloody acknowledge me. Hashtag go fuck yourself. I mean, to be fair, Cole Savage is a two-time Anarchy champion. His reign certainly doesn't hold up with the Bloody Brits, who's, uh, if he retains at validation, actually at validation, he'll break Ziegler's reign. If he retains, he'll go on to even further, you know, set a new one, but has the most championship defenses as an Anarchy Champion, currently at four. Again, he defends this Sunday against Genesis's Zach Cage. <laughs> Schmitty lets out a tweet asking Chris Andrews if he's on his team. I guess you could say he is. He's part of Team Fusion and Validation. Here comes Blake. He needs this win more than anything. Like I said, he's either 0-6 or 0-7 this season. Lost out 
on an opportunity to be the one challenging uh, Andrews for the Anarchy title last week, despite an absolutely fantastic match. Got match of the week um, with Zach Cage, of course. Here's the chosen one right out of the gate with that Rexplex. Jawbreaker from Jamie Blake to fire back. Wow, that was horrible precision there by the Australian Daredevil. He's getting a nice shot of Bateman's ass here. Jawbreaker there by Johnny Boy. Kick to the midsection. Oh, what a big old European up. That looks stiff. Still to come here tonight. Up next, that six man tag team matchup. Then we'll see Killjoy, the crazed clown, coming off his loss last week to Salvi. Battle Bob Luger, who's also coming off of a uh, loss on Monday Night Fusion when he and Frank traveled over to the uh, flagship show to do battle with Desolation in that steel cage. We got Andrew Briggs versus Elijah Stewart, a rematch from last week. And, of course, our main event, Ryan Kent and Justin Sane, old foes collide. And a last little preview of what's to come this Sunday. <laughs> John Bateman in control thus far out on the apron now. Going to take a risk, and it pays off somehow. Landing that frog splash at that angle. Okay, 10 out of 10. Very nice. We all know the resiliency of Blake, though. He may not have won the match this season, but it's taken a whole lot from every single man who's put him down to do so. Got the heart of a warrior. You heard Peanut got there from the chosen one. Now going to tuck him between the legs. Going for that butterfly backbreaker. Oh, but Blake stalls it. Great reversal on a short arm clothesline to follow it up. Who won last week between Andrew Briggs and Elijah Stewart? Andrew Briggs got the win. It was a dark match on the uh, live event. So we're going to get to see it live this time. Blake up on the second turnbuckle. Nice senton right there as he's turned the tide. Match now going in his favor. Drags him off towards the middle of the... Well, not really. Just <laughs> turn him at an angle. Drops the knee down into the kidneys. Hooks the leg now. One. Two. Just a two count. Pretty surprising that was a two count, though. Pretty early in the matchup. Kick to the spine. Grabbing him in a triangle hold. I haven't seen this in a while. Getting flashbacks of all the matches. Zach Payne won with this move. We're going to escape out of it pretty early, though, as Bateman doesn't want to stay along, around for uh, very long, but gets that boot right to the side of the head. Front headlock, Bateman now bringing him to the middle of the ring for a little exploder, seems he's going for. Instead, going to take an elbow to the back of the head now, kick to the midsection, going for that arm. This is a hammerlock, Northern Light suplex. This exchange between Schmitty and Bloody Brit on uh, Twitter. Oh, wait a minute, Jeremy Blake with that springboard frog splash. Seems like he almost fell out of the ring. I'm glad he didn't die. And we all, uh, if there's one thing you can say about Blake this season, it's he doesn't seem to know how to hit his finishers. Oh, but as I say that, going to the top rope, going to try for the spinal tap. Yes, he is going to try to bury that young talent. The spinal tap lands flush into the pin. One. Two, three, oh no, just a two count. 2.9999999999. That's not the Rexplex, though. I mean, the, 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 the freaking exploder that, or T Bone, rather, that he has this season isn't even the Rexplex. Gotta get that original one on there. Oh, what do we got here? Kiwi Crushers. These rapid fire kicks to the chest, and ladies and gentlemen, we all know where that final one goes, baby. Right to the back of the head. A CMB Classic and Bateman wasting no time as he immediately looks to finish Jeremy Blake off up over the shoulders. Oh, counters does Blake though into reverse DDT. That clutch last second reversal. I don't know what he's going for. Drops the fist. Does Blake here. Slow paced uh, between these two. I expect more from Jeremy Blake. Usually a high flyer going off the top off the ropes. He did hit that frog splash. Of course, we don't know very much about uh, old boy Bateman here. His first matchup in CMV. Dave Turner obviously has taken a liking to him if he gets to immediately debut here on Thursday night. Instead of uh, working his way up from the live event. Pretty close pin there by Blake. Oh, the 
the Gilla Cutter! Shit, I don't think anyone's ever used that in, ever in CMV any game. The McGilla Cutter, the greatest move of all time. Snapmare there. Transitions to a head scissor. A couple of stiff elbows. Gonna bring blood about as it drips from Blake's forehead. Looks like a nasty gash. Another knee down into the kidneys here. Gonna bring him up to his feet. Bateman. Maybe trying for a couple more kicks. Oh, goes for a spinning soul kick. Counters the counter. And floors him with quite the clothesline. Looks like he's clutching at his ribs there as the chosen one. As he's up on the second turnbuckle, beckoning the Australian daredevil to rise to his feet. Oh, he botched it. Oh, it's his debut. He's got some butterflies. You know how it is. He 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 deserves at least one botch. And he did take down Blake, so, you know, effective. Irish whip now into the corner. From behind, Bateman going to put him up top. Oh, boy. What is the newcomer going for here? Inverted suplex all the way from the top rope. A nasty maneuver. Bateman seems to think that'll be all she wrote, and I agree with him. Ah, oh, just a two count, though. That heart of Blake just keeps on pumping. Young blood, you can see he's physically worn here. It's been quite a back and forth matchup. Nobody's been discernibly in control for very long. Blake's actually doing very well. Oh, Pele kick! Busts Bateman wide open. Better get used to it. You're working in CMV, you're bleeding. Looks the leg. One, two, go! Oh! <laughs> oh shit! Blake got a win! Blake won a match! Oh, it just took some young talent to bury. That Pele kick out of nowhere. Balkan Bateman right on the head. One and seven. One and seven. What a win for the Australian Daredevil. Oh, damn. I thought it never happened. Hell has frozen over. Jeremy Blake won a match, ladies and gentlemen. Live on Thursday Night Genesis. John Bateman with a good showing. But the Australian Daredevil, the CMV veteran, turning things around for himself. Finally, Borton landed him that golden shovel, baby. Burying that young talent. See that Pele kick that came out of nowhere that did the deed. Here it is. Look at this. Bam! Right on the top of the noggin. Busts Bateman wide open. He's out like a light. You're going to see the soul leave his body. Might pull a Rex Carter. Forget where he is right now. I'm a professional wrestler? Welcome back, Hellish. Just in time to see Blake get a win. Absolutely shocking. We've never seen Blake's victory scene. The Australian Daredevil lets out a howl, baby. Uh, Big Tom, the new guy on the site, Topher. A oh, new guy named Velocity Sign. The guy before that, the Big Mama. Here we go, guys, to keep the action rolling. Six-man tag team bout coming our way as heaven or hell. Shackle up with the undefeated Kaiva to do battle with Bryce Hurt and Extreme Conditions. As I said earlier, it was last week, post-tag team cup, that heaven or hell kind of soiled the party, the high that Eric Matthews and Matt Jefferson, Eric Matthews, woo! Cop, don't take that as me being a big fan, okay? Okay? okay. Uh, Eric Thunder, I should say, and Matt Jefferson, when Angelicon Diablo defeated them, that upset. Now they're looking a world tag team title shot right in the face. Of course, Duo Maxwell in no shape to initiate his rematch clause. So, number one contender position wide open. And the CMB veterans, former CMB tag team champions, the second ever CMB tag team champions, 
trying to let everyone know that they are uh, not old dogs. They've still got that one last title run left in them. And of course, Kaiva and Bryce Hurt, if you're a member of the website, communityuniverse.forumotion.com, which you can join by doing exclamation point join in the chat. You'll get a hyperlink to the site. You would have seen that exclusive a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Kaiva, who's currently 2-0, uh, apparently a CMV like mini documentary, you could say, took us into his personal life. He's a stand-up comic uh, in his free time when he's not a wrestler. He was at, what was it, Big Joey's? Com uh, comedy club, I think it was, and Bryce Hurt was a, a member in the audience. And uh, let's just say Kaiva wasn't doing so great. His comedy wasn't an exactly uh, the funniest thing you'll ever hear. And Bryce Hurt took it upon himself to be that that classic troll audience, getting uh, everybody to boo, throwing insults Kaiva's way. And Kaiva storming off stage, wasn't too happy about it. Oh, and here's a tweet from Kaiva as he says, Call a garbage collector because I'm taking out the trash. Hashtag Tabadum. I assume he's talking about Bryce Hurt in that regard. That was one of his classic jokes that somehow didn't get a laugh. Joey's Comedy Club. Kaiva doesn't look like your typical stand-up comedian. I I agree. I agree, Maury. I wouldn't look at Kaiva and uh, think this guy does stand-up comedy in his free time. He's probably really funny. I'd look at Kaiva and say this guy probably skins wolves and fucks them. To be honest, that's what I see when I look at Kaiva. Bryce Hurt, of course, debuting at the uh, start of the new season, part of that new Superstar Initiative. Hasn't done that well. I think he's like 1-5 in five or 1-6 in six at this point. He got that one lucky victory, and it was a dark match on a live event. So he didn't even get to see it. <laughs> Uh-oh, man. Wolf better run and hide. Razor Window will protect him. The domestic terrorist so pumped for that return next Monday. Whoa, the bloody Brit with shots fired. He says, just watch him wrestle. Then you'll piss yourselves with laughter. Hashtag to dumb. Damn, this fire sent Kaiva's way by Chris Andrews. Bison eats babies. As snacks. If you are a CMV longtime viewer, you know these men very well. The second ever CMV tag team champions in the history of the show. Diablo and Angelico Heaven or Hell back to wreak havoc. These men were at the first ever ascendance way back when, when I used to play tag team matches because they go on for so long. You haven't seen that ascendance match between the nice guys and Heaven or Hell, baby. I suggest you go back and watch it because it was a good one. What up, Trub? What up, Big Trub? You know heaven or hell. You're a big fan. You missed that match, though, Trouble. That match between Silva and Bison. Match of the year contender. And here he comes again, currently 2-0, undefeated in singles competition. Let's see if he can work uh, together that teamwork on deck with Heaven or Hell to make it 3-0. 
I feel like cops getting into another dishwasher scenario here. We're just going to say the same thing over and over again for a week before it kills everybody. And he finally stops. He's not even American. He's from like Slovakia or something. I don't know. Czechoslovakia, I should say. There we have it. Kaiva in heaven or hell. Getting ready to battle. The repackaged Bryce Hurt got that dank new attire on deck. Oh, that sweet headband. You know if you got a headband, you're a fucking G, dude. I don't care where he's from. As if I would remember he was from Latvia. Oh, look at Bryce Hurt just making Diablo back down. Bryce Hurt geared up and ready to go here. As he will be joined by the CMB World Tag Team Champions, the second annual Tag Team Cup winners. Eric Matthews. Oh my God, I did it again. Eric Thunder and Matt Jefferson. Extreme conditions. Cop, I promise you I'm not a Matthews fan. I don't know why I keep saying it. It just keeps spilling out. Please don't push him anymore. I take Eric Thunder over Eric Matthews any day of the week. As here come E.T. and the self-proclaimed extremist of CMV. Childhood best friends busted their ass for over a year here in community universe mode to make their way to those belts. And here's a tweet, guys, from Bloody Brit that says, Jesus, what the hell am I watching? Genesis, don't bother showing up at validation. Some more ish here. What does he think of El Jefe, though? I bet Chris Sanders is a big El Jefe fan. They busted, they busted their nuts in Borton's milk for over a year to get to where they are now. I think they look sexy as hell with those new attires. Got to give that big shout to Treble. Borton thought he was drinking milk, but really it was cum. <laughs> Here we go, six-man tag team action. Be big Diablo. Start things off against Bryce Hurt. The referee rings the bell. It did indeed ding. And we get this one underway as Tablo right out of the gate. Rushing Bryce Hurt. Catches him with a back body drop though. Using his own hype against him. Gets the back double off to the midsection there. Back to his feet. Takes him overhead with the fireman's carry. Already five seconds in. It's a reversal fest, Maury. Out onto the apron goes the fiery demon. They're just going to stare at each other. Diablo's had enough, though. Suplexing him out of the ring, it looks like. My God! <laughs> Jesus Christ, that hurt Diablo, though. Just as much, if not worse, than it did Bryce. And then take a kick right to the face. My goodness. Another fireman's carry takeover. As the Hurt Nation are on their feet for this penalty backbreaker. Bryce is the one in the red. He's changed it up a bit, got himself a new attire. Trying to reinvent himself after the start of the season. Not really going his way. Better not take off that headband, player. If you know what's good for you, there's that short arm shoulder. I can get that count out already. Oh, big old tornado DDT. We're going to get that count out already, aren't we? Seven, guys. Seven. Diablo, get back in the ring. Diablo, go. Seven. Oh my God. Eight. Oh, but th 
No! <laughs> Stop it! No! Oh! Get him in! No! Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Whoo! Yo, just barely beat that count. My goodness. 9.9999999. There's that back suplex elbow drop, and Helico is the legal man now. The drop kick to the back of the neck. And Helico beckoning Hurt to rise to his feet here. Going to try for some springboard offense. The high-flying Luchador with a missile drop kick right to the back. Off the ropes he goes. Getting that velocity. Drops the elbow. Bryce Hurt rolling out of the ring, though. Got to watch out for Jefferson. Nearly took him off. Bryce now, what do we got? Rexplex. Everybody is no, Rexplex tonight, dude. Shout-outs everywhere. Tied to MJ, the extremist. The man who puts the extreme in extreme conditions. Oh. <laughs> GG. What is this now? Oh, my goodness. Going after that knee, it looks like. Now up on the second turnbuckle, he goes. Oh, punch him right in the dick. But he hit MJ on the way down, so still did damage. And still in control. Bryce Hurt just not doing very well uh, helping out his teammates here in this one. More harm than good. Arm drag. Takes him down, just staring at him. Peering into his soul. He's now in Helico. What do we got here? Brain Buster! Oh, was that a finisher? Was that a fin? One, two! Eric Thunder makes the save. How do you get a fin already? He must have hit his sig when I when I wasn't paying attention for like two seconds. Bryce Hurt got to get out of the ring right now, though. As Jefferson trying to turn things around for his team with that hammerlock lariat. And here's a tweet, guys, from John Reed, who says, What is that thing with the headband? It looks like Clifford the Big Red Dog threw up all over a guy. Hashtag disgusting. John Reed, not a big fan. Not booked tonight. Preparing for the Battle of Battles this Sunday at Validation. As he's on Team Genesis, there's that corkscrew elbow drop off the scoop slam. Takes a big old punch right to the dick. Jefferson now kicked to the midsection. A clobbering forearm right to the spine. Tagging in his other half. And Eric Thunder. Kick to the spine. And Helico using his speed to roll out of the way. Drops him with a boot square to the face. Now tag to Kaiba who's in here for the first time. Helico trying to size up E.T. Oh, goes for a leaping knee. He hit Kaiva, though. There's a Hurricane Rana. Luckily, had the force fields activated. Standing shooting star by Thunder, who's really been the MVP of extreme conditions this season. Not only undefeated in singles action, but also, man, you saw if you saw him live the Tag Team Cup, he was going... Especially in the first round against Desolation, he would just not give up. Not to say that Matt Jefferson hasn't been pulling his own weight, but certainly Eric Thunder been on one hell of a roll. There's a knee by Kaiba right to the temple of one half of the world tag team champions. A punch to the midsection. Oh, the Prince, the Prince boy. Oh, clothesline him right over the top rope. Sends him down to the outside of the ring. Eliminated from the Royal Rumble, brother. As Diablo watches on. Not going to interfere, though, unless things get hairy. There's a jawbreaker staggering Kaiba, the comedy enthusiast, as he rolls him back into the ring. E.T. stomping right down in them quads. And a neckbreaker to follow that up. Oh, rolling thunder, baby. Absolutely beautiful as he goes to the top rope. We know what Thunder's going for here. A little bit of chocolate rain with the imploding 450. Kaiba could be in trouble. Not going to go for the pin, though, GG. Now he is after a stop to the knee. One, two. Oh, Bryce Hurt able to stop Diablo and Matt Jefferson flooring and Helico. But Kaiba, oh, <laughs> what a dysfunctional team Bryce Hurt and extreme conditions have been, dude. Absolutely terrible. 
Here's a tweet, guys, from the Asian sensation. Paul Devine says, Bloody Brit talking that ish when he'll probably be the first in and first one pinned. Hashtag should have been Reese. Hashtag hot fire. I guess Paul Devine thinks that Chris Andrews is in the uh, tug of war match, but he is not. He's actually, uh, I said he was part of Team Fusion because he's defending the Anarchy title against the Genesis guy in Zach Cage. He's not in the tug of war match, though. But still, Paul Devine getting in some shots. Of course, it was Chris Andrews who beat him on Fusion. Paul Devine said he let him beat him in the, in the you know, the, the uh, hopes of Team Spear. There is, we get the big old avalanche by Kaiba. One, two, but Eric Thunder again with the clutch breakup. Landslide, I should say. I was trying to think of the name. Oh, Bryce Hurt just sleeping on his feet right now. Bloody Brit saying, is Sushi high? The hell is he on about? Hooks the leg. Oh, Eric Thunder. Not, oh, oh, oh. I don't know what's going on there. Kai be able to kick out, though. Bryce Hurt getting that cheeky little kick in, because why not? Oh, he's stuck on Matt Jefferson. He better get out of there. He is just taking his time. The ref count is getting pretty close. Oh, air raid siren inbound. Right down onto the neck. And we know what that what follows up that maneuver is usually the twist of fate. Instead, going to taunt the CMB universe. Pandering to the sea of fans here live for this go-home edition of the Thursday Night Brand. And here we go, right in front of heaven or hell. Going to try for the twist of fate, which he gets off. Kaiba eating some canvas. Oh, oh, yo, into the pin, one, two, no, just a two count, the extremist, and they wasting a little bit too much time going right for the pin, but Eric Thunder, Bryce Hurt, spearing heaven or hell off the apron, Kaiba, that resiliency though here, as he goes for the pin on MJ, oh, <laughs> Referee just died in the middle of all that. Diablo now just trying to kill Thunder as Bryce Hurt scrambling to get to his feet. Big old forearm smash. Face of Kaiba now. Going to put him in the corner. Referee back to his feet. He's not dead, thank God. Kaiba, though, counters. Gets himself in a dominant position. What's he going for here? Modified suplex into the turnbuckles. And now Kaiva got to put him in the corner again. He's going to try for here. A tag to Diablo. They're going to work together. As the big man of the top rope up on the shoulders. Oh, my God. Doomsday device. My goodness. That teamwork by Diablo and Kaiva, honorary member of heaven or hell. It is the co-main event. So up next is Killjoy versus Bob Luger. Then... It is Andrew Briggs versus Elijah Stewart. Blow right to the ribs. Jefferson's got to get that tag, man. He's been there for a long while. He's going to go for it. Oh, but Diablo having none of it. Now the demon with these Phil Nelson face slams right to that top turnbuckle. Looking for blood. Hungry for it. Thirsty for it. As now he's going to stop a mud hole in him. Look at this right in front of Bryce Hurry. He can't do anything about it. The ref is watching out a couple of middle fingers because why not insult to injury? Oh, and a choke slam now from the Goliath. As we get another tweet here from Paul Devine. He says, the day, Sunday, the title, Anarchy, your ass on the mat, one Two, three, and Diablo pins Matt Jefferson again, heaven or hell, getting one up over the tag team champions. So Paul Devine saying, you know, correcting himself, saying, you know, it's still going to be the same result. Your ass on the canvas losing the Anarchy title for us. What a choke slam from Diablo. Deliver Diablo, blah, blah, blah. Diablo, though, delivers the victory to he and Jaleco and Kaiva. And I'd say Heaven or Hell have more than earned their shot at the tag team titles. Back-to-back -back weeks beating the champions. And here's a tweet from the Brit saying, Well, every day you face me, your ass is on the map. One, two, three. And there was that choke slam all the way from hell. 
Look how, Ky look how quick Kaiva and, and Angelico are in the ring to stop Bryce Hurt. Oh, oh actually, just Angelico stopped Bryce Hurt and Eric Thunder all on his own. Eric Thunder. Cop. Kaiva remains undefeated. Heaven or hell, look at a world tag team title shot right in the face. There we go, guys. Up next, more singles action. Coming away as early this week on Monday Night Fusion, Bob Luger not doing so well alongside Furious Frank when they took that trip over to the flagship show to battle Desolation, testing the waters, per se, as we will in tonight's main event between Kent and Sane. And Furious Frank actually very quickly ended up leaving the steel cage, allowing Desolation to jump Bob Luger. Of course, the numbers game coming back to bite him as Frank just watched on with a devilish grin. So Bob Luger really needs that win. He's had a tough season. Definitely more losses than wins. Luger needs to cement a victory here tonight, carry that momentum along with him to, to pair with his team. For that big old matchup just days away. And Luger has one of the co-captains especially. You know, the team members need to look up to him for guidance in the match. If he just keeps on losing. Well then what kind of man is he to look up to really? <laughs> Arriba! First time matchup, though, Killjoy, as I said earlier in the stream, coming off that loss to Salvi last week. And uh, one hell of a match. It was no holes bar, but no weapons introduced between the two rivals. They were just more intent on getting their hands on each other, old-fashioned style. Killjoy looking to bounce back now. Certainly putting down one of the pillars of Genesis. Be a good place to start. And here's a tweet from Paul Devine responding to Chris Andrews, he says, always talking about my ass. I'm flattered. I really am. But I do prefer the ladies. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Damn. I know a lady I prefer. That's Jay Devine. Woo, you know what I'm saying? And here comes the crazed clown. Oh, damn! This hot fire spit back by Bert. He says, shame the ladies don't prefer you. They prefer a real champ. Hashtag stand down. The savagery going on right now. And I thought these two men respected each other. Bloody Brit in a foul mood, though, after Sam Valentine attacked him on Fusion. So I don't blame him. They both get a chance to take out their aggressions on their respective foes this Sunday. Bam, bam, the work and the Titan, baby. The cardio maniac, the second generation superstar, the one and only Bob Luger. Needs this win here tonight. He cannot go into validation with a loss on his side. How could he call himself a captain? And a response from Paul Devine. He says, I have heard the ladies do prefer just insane. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Damn. I wonder if Paul Devine prefers just insane, though. Hey, Suntan, 38 seconds. 
Just got to get it in there. Got to get it in there, fam. Can never let you forget. Bob Luger looks determined. The whole front row bowing down to him. Here we go. Killjoy toe-to-toe -to -toe with old Bobby Luger. Referee rings the bell and Killjoy right out of the gate with a tilt the world DDT. Going to catch the son of the legendary Lex off guard. And the bloody Brit says, please, Justin has no balls. So I doubt the ladies want a piece of that. Damn, Sans Sans got no balls. So if he wants Justin uh, angry at him, what happened in the main event of Cyber Slam? Quick pin attempt by Killjoy already, just a one count. Here's a tweet, guys, from Salvi. Rarely hear from him on uh, the social media website. He says, when you beat Killjoy and he gets a match with one of the best, and I fight a Mexico reject who makes tacos on Tuesdays to pay the bills. Damn, that, uh, that slight little hint of racism in that one right there. Later on, the uh, live event, El Jefe goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the masked man. Obviously not too happy about it. He thinks he deserves this match against Bob Luger. Though Salvi got an opportunity to prove himself uh, hanging with the big dog. Certainly was a great match, but he lost to Furious, frankly. That was three weeks ago. Big ol' backbreaker. Do some damage to that spine. As Luger now turns around. Power slam. Bob Luger mixing together shades of his uh, papa. Strength. Pure, absolute strength and aggression. Also, as you see right there, the wrestling skills. College uh, National All-American was Bob Luger. Can take it to the mat with the best of them. As he's got Killjoy in a bad way right now. Just as I say that, the crazed clown slams him face first. Let's say shoulder first, I should say. Clutching at that arm. Stomps on the elbow. Luger takes the knee right to the chest. He's going to put him back in control as he scales to the top turnbuckle. The second turnbuckle, rather, and a senton pulled off. Simple but effective. <laughs> Fucking racist. Come on. Oh, going for some dark matter, but Luger going to be able to escape out of it. Very last millisecond there. So his life flash before his eyes. Now kicking it old school. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. I thought he was going for just a suplex. Instead, takes the knees to the spine. My God. And now, oh, shit. Curb stomp. Just like they do it in the hood, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and there's just that creepiness about Killjoy. As he salivates at the mouth, the thought of inflicting pain on his opponents. Oh, Luger. Shooting for a sig, I think. Something big there. Countered. By Killjoy. So what is this guy doing now? He's flipping Luger around. Elbow drops to the inner thigh. Now lock him in place. He hammers away at the side of the knee. Going to make it hard for Luger to stand. Works on it enough. Stomp down to the chest. Oh, and another one. Brings him right back down. To the top rope. Scales KJ. Going to fly high. The question as always though. Will it pay off? The hell is he doing? Coup de Gras looks like double boot stomp right to the ribs. An easy way to crack a couple of them. Irish whip now the work ethic tight and puts him in the corner. But nobody puts Killjoy in a corner for long. Puts him in the other one. Now going to cautiously approach him. Luger's no fool. Going to take a big old crack to the jaw though. Quickly. Just counter after counter after counter. Reversal fest up in here, Maury. Like it's 1999. Versus DDT. Trying to go for something. Jesus Christ, man. Reversal after reversal. These two won't stop. Oh! Luger! With a Cody Allen Cyclone! Shades of Timmy Boy! Oh my god! One! Two! Three! Oh no! Just so close to the three. And Luger now looking to finish things off. With a Luger landing, baby. Bam! Plants him face first. Right into the pin. One. Two. What? 
Here's a tweet, guys, from El Jefe responding to Salvi. He says, racist. But what would I expect from a guy who wears a mask? Unlike you, I have to wear mine. Tacos does sound nice, though. Arriba! Oh, and there's that snap DDT from Killjoy. I love the shout-out to the fallen Tim LaFave there with the Cody Allen Cyclone. Killjoy just going to stare at Luger as we get another tweet here from Sam Valentine, the dream. Oh, but wait a minute. Put that on pause. Because Killjoy looking for the end of days. Oh! <laughs> he reversed it. I've never seen that reversal before. That was slick as hell. And now Luger with a second Luger landing. Middle of the ring. Puts him down for the count, baby. One, two, three, and Bob Luger with the win. That reversal was clutch. Here's that tweet, though, as we get the playbacks. Uh, Valentine says, Luger talking about looks on that social media when he looks like his day job is doing birthday parties as a lookalike Lady Gaga. As always, got to talk trash during each other's matches. That was a slick end. I've never seen that reversal for it before on the uh, end of days. Looks like a counter, like an STL. Fucking awesome. And then right into a second Luger landing. Whoa! Wait a minute! Furious Frank, the Alpha World Champion! What is he doing down here? Attacking Bob Luger! Massive Larry in the corner and a sit-out alley-oop bomb. Why is Frank attacking his teammate, his co-captain, the alpha male, with the sit-out face buster? The referee trying to get Frank to stop, but the furious one isn't done yet, sizing up Luger. Looking for that tombstone pile driver. Why, Frank? Why? Floors him, and finally Frank is done. What a savage assault. With validation this Sunday, Frank a crotch chop to finish it off. Why would he do that? Furious Frank could have very well just injured Bob Luger just days away from the tug of war match. And Frank might have just cost himself a teammate. Nasty attack on Luger. Why, Frank? Why? don't understand why Frank would do that. Ah, so we got another tweet here, though, from Sam Valentine. He says, Luger's pecs look like they crawled out of a tub of lard, ate some donuts, fornicated with pigs, and then threw up onto his chest. Hashtag, get them gains. Hashtag, do you lift. I'm sure Valentine was smiling from ear to ear as he watched Frank just demolish the work ethic titan. Okay, here is a tweet, guys, from Terry Sherman, the real G. He says, shut your mouth, white boy. You wouldn't know looks if they slapped you on your crack ass. Not, not cracker ass, just crack ass. When I slap your ass, hashtag I'm coming. I'm assuming that's directed towards Sam Valentine there. Crack ass. 10 out of 10. Uh, it is co main event time, my friends. As a rematch from last week's live event coming our way. We didn't get to see it, of course. It was a dark match, but Briggs was the victor over the Good Vibes Kid. Now we get to see it live and in person. I'm excited. It is sure to be a good one. Andrew Briggs battling Elijah Stewart. <laughs> Both of these men coming off of losses at Tokyo. Uh, in Tokyo, Japan, I should say the Tag Team Cup. Andrew Briggs uh, failing to capture the international title. Failing to capture the light heavyweight championship. Both looking to get back to their number one contender's positions. Where they win here. 
Here's a tweet from John Reed, guys, directed at general manager Dave Turner. He says, so, looks like your captains can't play nice. How do you expect us to coexist Sunday? Hashtag your fault. I can't argue with John Reed, to be honest. I'd be a little bit uh, pissed off if I saw that as well. John Reed, a member of Team Genesis, and the captain, the co-captains attacked, attacked. Bob Luger did Furious Frank. Who knows if that was a nasty, that tombstone pile driver was was vicious looking. Who knows if Luger's going to even be at validation after that. Or want to be at validation, even if he's okay to compete. Why would he want to be on the same team as Frank? Main event stood a couple. Our final a little taste of what's to come this Sunday as old foes Ryan Kent and Justin Sane do battle. Andrew Briggs prepared for battle here in this one. Elijah Stewart, season three veteran. Former world tag team champion. Numerous time at number one contender to very else. The Good Vibes Kid, they're going to get the CMB Universe up on their feet for what is sure to be a high-flying and technical matchup between these two. Steve Nash couldn't get the assist. I don't want none. What? Classic cop line. Here we go. Referee rings the bell as Andrew Briggs and Elijah Stewart go at it. This combination by the Good Vibes Kid right out of the gate, though. As now it goes for an Irish strip, tries to catch him on the rebound with the spinning back fist. It was looking like there's a spinning soul kick. My God, the quickness of Elijah just taking Briggs over. I don't think Briggs even knows what's going on right now. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Andrew Briggs, a two-time CMV light heavyweight champion. As we get a tweet here from Salvi, guys, he says, I already proved Killjoy was a kill joke. Too bad a Luger couldn't have faced someone of my caliber to push him to his limits. I'm always here, though. It seems as though Salvi isn't really taking El Jefe very uh, seriously for their matchup later on on the live, and that may be a mistake. Bob Luger won, and then he was attacked by Furious Frank. Great ending. I never saw that counter to the end of days before. Beautiful, and then right into a Luger landing. It was 10 out of 10. Oh, that <laughs> fucking heard that kick back in Tokyo. Fucking thigh slap, though, and then the knee as Briggs. Of course, the egomaniac. I'm surprised he's ever able to fit in the ring with another person. Oh, but that... Oh my god, I've never seen that before. Seeing so many new fucking animations tonight. Jesus. That German suplex was nasty, yo. There's a German suplex. This time, Riggs, though, to Elijah here. Snapping the arm over the shoulder. Oh, takes the. Oh, poke to the eyes. Damn, that combo. Going for that fly backbreaker. Oh, right down to the spine again. Seems to be a target here for Briggs in this one. Drops down the knee. Springboard going for a crossbody. Elijah Stewart going to roll out of the way. Then I'll go for the knee. Andrew Briggs, a high flyer. Likes to zip around that ring and use his speed. So the legs always a great target for anybody like that. Elijah Stewart, too, as well. Likes to take risks. Big part of his uh, his arsenal, his move set. Get that head scissors cinched in. Andrew Briggs able to escape those slip through. 
Takes a crack right to the jaw, flips around as Briggs, Irish whip off the ropes, rebounds into a drop kick attempt. And Briggs got pissed that he missed that. He was not happy. From behind now. Stewart gonna put him up top. The good vibes kid looking for something big here. Briggs having absolutely none of it from the top rope with a Hurricane Rana. Elijah selling that one very nice. All right, nice. Oh, and a shining wizard. No, Borton's 0-3 against Headhunter. That was his NXT record. <laughs> we know what that shining wizard is usually a prelude to, though. Going to go for another one in the corner. And then into that vicious short arm clothesline. Middle of the ring, into the pin. One, two. Just a two count, though. Stewart able to ha, 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 stay alive. Riggs now trying to stand that driver's seat. Goes for the jumping gutter. Stewart, though, forearm smash at close range. Takes him out of the ring. Oh, my God. What is Elijah Stewart doing here? The good vibes kid with a wrist over the top rope of the senton. The fans just no-selling that here live in attendance. As now we get a monkey flip. Launched him. Man, damn. Surprised didn't go over the barricade. <sighs> Face first into the steel post. Referee at a count of three now. And this co-main event matchup still to come. Ryan Kent of Genesis defending his home turf against Fusion's undisputed champion, Justin Sane. Our final little preview what's to come this Sunday in that tug-of-war match. Elijah Stewart paying too much attention to the Stewies here. Briggs able to capitalize. Goes for a scoop slam, reverses his Elijah into a kick-out. Reverse DDT. There's that soccer ball kick right to the spine of Stewart now. Going to be looking to finish things off with that brain buster. Into the pin. Could Elijah pull out the win here with this one? Yo, so close. Elijah even thinks that was a three. I don't blame him. Might have thought that was a three as well if I was in there. Stewart now going to go for the high flying risk, but he horribly misses. Even went after Briggs moved out of the way already. As Andrew paying too much time to his, paying too much attention, I should say, to his moneymaker. Gets caught with that knee straight to the face. Elijah with a... Snapmare attempt. Briggs, I think, trying to go for his comeback. He might end up losing it, though. Elijah fighting him off very well. Back elbow out of the corner. Mishinoku driver, a staple of CMV. A match ender. Could it end this one, though? No, just a two count. Oh, he missed that so bad. Look, he's like, no, no, nothing happened, though. This night of botches and a Topher call ain't even on the main card. What's up, dude? Oh, dirty heel tactics employed. How's the ref not see that? Luckily, Stewart able to save himself. Oh, a brain bus is burying Elijah's own fin. GG, no re. And now Andrew Briggs goes for a kick to the thigh. Looking for that shining wizard. Elijah, though, fights him off. Forearm smash of his own. Oh, good vibes, but Andrew shutting that shit down from coast to coast. Shutting that shit down from coast to coast. Oh, and a catchphrase now. Literally everybody has that. Oh, is that a sig, too? One, two. Oh, just a two count, though. I got the, uh, the the blue shirt ref for reality wrestling. At least mix it up a little bit over there. Don't want any of the rookies getting screwed by John Cohn. By the way, reality wrestling. Going to be picking up post-validation if you want your call on it. Respond to that thread on the website. CommunityUniverse.4Motion.com if you're not a member already. Those vicious knee strikes to the spine and then drops them. The reverse DDT. Trying to go to the top rope is Briggs. Maybe look for his spinal tap, but Elijah's big fat legs are in the way. 
Instead, going to settle for the second rope. And just going to stare at him. Getting that bird's eye view. Wasting way too much time. And Elijah now back to his feet. Andrew Briggs landing face first. Good vibes. Pulled off this time successfully. And Elijah ain't even going to try for the pin. Immediately going to go for the brain buster a second time. No counters. Briggs. Oh, brain buster. Danny. Oh, those, those 2K15 flashbacks right there. Trying to finish again, but only a two count. Tyson, I did. Cage is still on CC. I passed him last night. As is Logan uh, Cunningham. Up to the top rope. Goes the good vibes kid. What is he going to try for up here? Perch, body splash, but once more, the high-risk offense does not pay off. Oh, oh, what was he going for there? I don't know. He's going for a punch to set up a sig. Reel him in, baby. Bust him wide open. Wouldn't be a CMV match without blood. Flips him over, making sure there's no rope breaks in sight. One, two... Just a two count, though. Elijah Stewart struggling. Spinning soul kick. Sucks the air right out of Stewart. Puts Andrew back in control. Oh, down to the knee and the neck breaker. Staple. And the Andrew Briggs moves set. Andrew Briggs. Andrew Briggs. The miss it. Andrew Briggs. Another brain buster down under the knee. Again shoots for the pin. One, two, but that's not going to be enough to keep down the CNB veteran as blood pours from that gash on his forehead. It's a co main event matchup. Been at one hell of a bout thus far. I'd still give match of the night, though. But Sean Silva and Bison. Of course, still got that main event to come, which could be match of the year contender between old foes Ryan Kent and Justin Sane. Could Ryan Kent of Genesis defend his home turf be the one to uh, put a, a kink in Sane's armor this season, currently undefeated, as up to the top rope. Andrew Briggs going to be sent for a ride with the Frankensteiner. Hooks the leg. One, two... Oh my god, how is that not a three? This matchup, though, certainly a runner-up. As Elijah again going for that high-risk offense, and again it fails. This is the third time in this match that he's tried to go for a springboard maneuver or a top rope maneuver, and it's fucked him over. Lateral press, just a two count. Andrew Briggs now frustrations boiling over as he stomps down to the back of Elijah's head. Oh, puts him in the corner. Does he have a fin though? I don't know. Yes, he does, but Elijah counters it with a back elbow. And a brain buster! A second time. Making sure there ain't no rope breaks. Hooks the leg. One, two. No! <laughs> Andrew Briggs kicks out of a second brain buster. Oh, too much time, I guess. Elijah spent dragging away from the ropes. Oh, maybe going to resort to a submission? No, nah, just some squats. Got to get them exercises in whenever you can, fam. Doing some damage to them legs. Andrew Briggs had enough of that, though. That cut's just getting worse and worse. Yeah, perfect time to taunt here, Andrew. Perfect time to be taunting. Has control. Might have just passed it off, though, to his opponent. Lifting Elijah to his feet. Now just going to stare at him. Puts him in the corner again. Going to try to finish. And this time, doesn't look like the Good Vibes kid's going to be able to get out of it. Shining Wizard. And then a massive short arm clothesline into the pin. One, two, three. And Andrew Briggs with the victory. Just in time to see Elijah lose, Mari. 
Great matchup, though. Runner-up, I'd say. But still match of the night, Sean Silva Bison. We still got that massive main event. Ryan Kent versus Justin Sane. Old foes colliding for our final taste of what's to come this Sunday. But Andrew Briggs secures another win over Elijah Stewart. What a match, though. And there was a second Shining Wizard short arm clothesline combo that did it in for the Good Vibes Kid. Hey, what up, Kenji, my friend? Welcome to the stream. Kenji actually has a match tonight on the uh, live event, teaming with uh, Kevin Lee, of course, battling newcomers, the Misfits. Whoa! Who the hell is this guy? Security! Oh, flooring Andrew Briggs! Who the hell is this? He's wearing a mask. I have no idea who this guy is. He's absolutely massive. Just flooring Briggs out of that hellacious match. Can we get some security in here? Now he's just walking into the ropes. Andrew Briggs fighting back, trying to get this, this, I don't know, is this a fan or something? Oh, SOS. Andrew Briggs having none of this. Oh, going for the Shining Wizard. But this mystery man rejects it. Now we're to the top of the head. Puts him out on the apron. Where's Elijah Stewart? Oh, perfect time to be taunting. 10 out of 10. Just gonna look at each other. This stare off. Andrew Riggs saying, come on, give me some more, big guy. But this mystery man, no idea who he is, just content to stare at Briggs. Andrew keeps on saying, come on, that's it, that's all you got? Obviously, it's Hayden. Hayden got jacked. Go back to that season one, Hayden. Am I right? Forearm smashes. Andrew Briggs finally tries to take him down. The mystery man just not about getting in the ring. Oh, it's a Gurry eats now. Still not going to get in the ring, though. <laughs> he just keeps reversing Briggs every time he tries to attack him. Ref, can we get some order in here? What's going on? Security, another Enziguri. He's just toying with Briggs, just fucking with him. 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, he's going to reverse it again. Oh, no, he got him. He actually got him. Finally gets this mystery man away from him. We get some security and refs down here to break this up. Andrew Briggs defending off this anonymous attacker. Just barely, though. Who the hell was that guy? A rogue fan would be my guess. Oh, my God. But it is now main event time, my friends. As Genesis's fire starter, Ryan Kent, defending his home turf against the undisputed champion of Fusion, just insane. What up, Trey Trey? Big Chris Adams. Welcome to the stream, my friend. And we heard that, uh, we saw rather that tweet from John Reed earlier where he wasn't too happy about Furious Frank attacking Bob Luger earlier. I wonder how Ryan Kent feels. Again, still the mystery man to be revealed. The seventh member of Team Genesis has still yet to be revealed. And now they might be down another member. Like I said, that was a nasty tombstone pile driver that Frank floored Luger with. I don't know his condition yet. No update yet. I haven't heard anything, which I guess I would take as a good sign is he's okay. But validation this Sunday, my friends. If you don't want to miss it, make sure you follow me. Even better chance of knowing exactly when it's going live. Check out our website at communityuniverse.4emotion.com, exclamation point CMV, exclamation point join in the chat. Give you a hyperlink to the site, the steps you can follow to get your call on the program. Former foes, though, many years ago, these two collided over the world title that Sane now holds. Remember, it was... Justin Sane, who uh, won the Undisputed Championship for the first time inside the Elimination Chamber at Bad Blood. Then Ryan Kent would cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase to dethrone Sane. The following month in a uh, triple threat match joined by Scott Nori, Sane would win it back. And then the two would go one-on-one -on -one in a classic matchup. 
If you've watched CMB since then, you were a viewer back back then, you remember that match. It was a great match. Go back and check it out if you didn't see it. One of the best of all time at um, Vengeance, the second annual. Was it the second annual or first? It was the, second, it was the first only Vengeance we've had. So you should be able to find it pretty easily. And obviously, Sane retaining. These two haven't been in the ring together for a very long time, though. Both on opposite sides of the fence at validation. Ryan Kent. Second ever CMB Grand Slam winner, or Grand Slam champion, I should say. Winning every single title in CMB. The only title he has not held is the uh, tag titles on Fusion. Which obviously he has no chance of getting anytime soon unless he's uh, drafted at some point. Guaranteed future Hall of Famer, the longest reigning light heavyweight champion of all time. Most defenses of any champion in all of CMB at nine with the belt. No doubt he's the greatest light heavyweight champ of all time. Got to be mentioned as one of the greatest champions, period, of all time. But he's about to meet another man who has just as many accolades as he. The one and only unpredictable Justin Sane, the four-time world champion, the longest reigning world champion on Fusion and Genesis. Did Marco punish? Did Marco punish only had five months, right? So I don't think there's been a longer reigning world champion on Master Intensity. Just Marco almost got to him. Sunshine's pretty long right now. He might be catching up. But on Fusion and Genesis, Sane still holds a record on the track to break his own record. Currently at three and a half months in his fourth reign. Ah, Hellish, you are correct. The Alpha World title. How could I forget? He hasn't held the uh, Alpha World Championship. He's hungry for it, though. Kent on the track, especially a win over Justin Sane here, like I said earlier, uh, handing him his first loss this season, putting a chink in his armor with validation coming up. If I were Dave Turner, I'd certainly uh, put Kent in the running for a future Alpha World title shot. Currently, no number one contender for Frank. Uh, busy with the tug of war match, of course. But after. Who is in line? Who's going to step up? Here we go, main event time. Ryan Kent colliding with Justin Sane. Obviously a non-title match, but a whole lot of momentum at stake here. Carried into that. Seven on seven tug of war match, the first of its kind in CMV's nearly four year history. Fusion versus Genesis, Johnny Sampson versus Dave Turner. Turner's career on the line, the future of Genesis on the line. As we get some headbutts here from the unpredictable one. Ryan Kent now going to target the legs of Justin Sane with that devastating, one of the most devastating, I'll tell you who, what the most devastating maneuver in the wrestling world is, Maury, and that's the foot DDT. Right next to that, to that, uh, that thigh elbow drop of doom. Oh, nice counter by Kent right there into a single knee gut buster. Sane came running at him. Yeah, rip the up. That's how it goes. If... Now, if so, one guy, let's say someone from Fusion, eliminates all seven members of Genesis by himself, the other six members of Fusion get the night off. They don't got to worry. They get that big old paycheck for being there. They don't have to do anything. I doubt that's going to happen, though. It would be something to see, certainly. But that could happen. We could see people not even compete if uh, one team is fully eliminated before uh, the others come out.
You think Borton would eliminate all seven of them? Borton's busy defending against Azriel, though. It's just insane. Seemingly not taking this matchup very seriously. Toying with Kent a little bit as he catches him with that catchphrase, paying homage to his longtime rival, perhaps his greatest rival of all time. And Hayden, Papa Bless, rip in peace, never forget. Where's El Hado? What up, Jordan Alexander? Welcome to the stream, my friend. Oh, jumping cutter by the unpredictable one. Justin Sane's not stupid, though. Ryan Kent, very resilient. Justin Sane knows that from experience. He knows that that cutter's not going to be enough to put him down. There's that strength, though, of the fire starter with the sit-out schoolboy powerbomb. Uh, if you could whisper, did you whisper that to, okay, you did whisper it to me, so I can check it after the stream, I got you though, Kenji, Ryan Kent trying to mount his comeback here, gets that clothesline off, back body drop to the world champion, gonna look to finish it off with that massive spine buster, Kent now, where's he going, oh, now he's the one toying with saying like, yeah, yawn, I guess this is an okay match, not even breaking a sweat. That vintage single knee face maker. And this is just speed versus strength here. Looks to capitalize, but just a two count. Just insane. Very fast, very slow. I'm not saying Sane's not strong. He certainly is, but Ryan Kent in a whole league of his own. As Kent looking to finish with the Kent Clash, but just insane shuts that shit down real quick. Having absolutely none of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, single underhook face buster. Going to try to win off of that, but again, just a two count. Ryan Kent feeling as though he's the biggest dog in the Genesis yard. I'm sure he thinks he should be captain, much like Schmitty thinks he should be captain of Fusion over same. Oh, that knee's jerking. We know what's coming next. What? <laughs> An STL. <laughs> what? GG, no re. Playing with Kent. As now, what is he going for here? Suplex pile driver. Shades of CMB Hall of Famer Scott Nori, another rival of Justin Sane's past. And he gets the three count. Justin Sane comes to Fusion, or Genesis rather, I should say, from Fusion, and conquers the Firestarter just like he did all those years ago, paying homage to Scott Nori with the suplex pile driver. And here's a tweet as you get these replays from the bloody break. He says, unpredictable one? More like predictable, same old shit. No balls, never defends his belt unless the odds are in his favor. Piece of shit. A follow-up tweet saying, not salty though. <laughs> I feel like Andrew's a bit salty there. You missed the whole show, Jordan. We do have the live event still to come. Three more matches, but Genesis comes to an end with the champ conquering Kent in a great match. Both men letting their ego show a little bit as they played with each other throughout. But that suplex pile drive, I love the way he like juked him out with the, uh, the need to win there. Absolutely awesome. 10 out of 10. Good Genesis. All right, let's see if uh, we can get this commentary team going. So we can get up on her. You're going to be a Genesis guy, Maury? Going for Big Kent? I don't know, after that performance, Sane carrying the momentum into that tug-of-war match this Sunday. All uh, right, who we got? Cop, you're on, right? Let's get that Let's get that big CMV joint commentary, baby. Big Eck, get in here, bitch. What we got, Gumby Boy? Big Gum? Let's get Gumbo in here. I don't have that profile added, though, Cop, so you're going to have to join on your own. Should I invite Rift? <laughs> Let's get rifted in here. Oh, there's Big Gummy, babe. The gum boy.
Stop playing NHL, Echo, and get on this commentary team. Oh, look at Paul Devine actually coming to uh, Justin Sane's defense, I guess you could say here, as he tweets at Chris Andrews saying, how about you get a win over Sane before you talk that ish? Devine seems to be a big uh, Sane fanboy tonight. Defended him a couple of times. Uh-oh, we got a news alert. Who's injured? Sean Silva has suffered a minor injury during his match, although doctors have cleared him to continue competing. I'm not surprised at all. What did he ate? He ate five spears, four, uh, um, fucking, what are they called again? No time running out? No time left? I'm forgetting. I know I said it four times in that match. And two bison bombs. So I'm not surprised that Sean Silva has taken that, uh, that slight injury there. We'll find it, bitch. And here's a tweet from the Brit responding to Paul Devine. He says, you can't even beat me. Sit the fuck down, bitch. These two going hard on each other tonight. Let's see what's good. Promo from Bill Maverick. I don't think so. We'll, hear, we'll get a promo from someone, though. I want to hear about some milk. We didn't get one on Genesis. I need a promo every stream. What's up? What up, fam? Uh, you got to be the winner, fam. Gotta get that winner. Oh, God, no. <laughs> that promo 30 skill. Alright, we got Zach Hardy and Jace of the Misfits getting that debut victory last week. I'm gonna carry that momentum over as they will battle Kenji Murakami and Kevin Lee. Don't do it yet, bitches. I'm not counting those. We do it when I get there. We do it when I get there. All right? When I say so, punk. Who you think you are running shit around here? <laughs> oh, Paul Devine talking about that victory he got over Justin Sane like two years ago. One minute. Something, something tells me like it, uh, we got uh, Chris Andrews in here. I'm finished since <laughs> Bake Off left BBC. Oh. oh <laughs> Is that how you uh, read every single Chris Andrews promo? Just imagine that <laughs> voice. <laughs> All right. Then we've got El Jefe in the building. <laughs> Battling Salvi. <laughs> when I, get there, when I, get I mean, get on the commentary, Topher. Prove yeah, prove, that not prove me voice. wrong, Topher. I mean, I can play you Hayden's voice if you want, Dashing. What is this, uh, no thing now? Can you just hear it? What is I'm that? Say it again. Oh, it's from that. <laughs> Another surprise appearance from Chris Andrews. Wow, I set you up and you just shut it down, huh? Sorry, I'm finding something. I'm, fi I'm, I'm finding Hayden's voice for you. It's quite sexy, mate. No, I don't know. He's actually quite posh. What? El Jefe? <laughs> Arriba! Baby! The best of all time. I'm just hoping he doesn't sue me after Salvi was extremely racist uh, on Twitter earlier in the night. Said something like, go make tacos or something. Called him a fake Mexican. This is a lost I'll have to try to get that revenge. Whenever you read a Hayden promo in a future session, this is the voice for you. Oh my gosh, we beat AFC Liverpool at the weekend. I had such a big night afterwards. I was on the Amaretto's and I think nine o'clock. Hayden's voice for you. Oh, it's so gay. The voice gives me fucking cancer. <laughs> Wouldn't Hayden's voice be your voice, I feel like? No, no, I'm Mr. Nash Tastic. Hmm. Actually, you're Nash Tisco? Tiskio? Nash, Nash Tastico, yeah. I actually have Bannon's voice on here. Oh, cool, yeah. <laughs> they just.
Gumble, did you forget to check the box again? <sighs> Life's more about just checking boxes again. Okay? Alright, now you can do the winner thing. Look, since there's all three mods here, we'll do a triple threat for the bonus match. Wow. So all three of you can do a winner. Mori won. Nice. Mori got gumbles. Wait, who's the other Mori? Oh, Echo. Echo won. <laughs> Echo won. So Mori, Echo, Big Ek, where you at? Give us that third, fam. God damn it, Echo. <laughs> where are you, bitch? Hey. And Gumble, uh, the mod <laughs> choosing each other. Mori, Echo, and Gumble. Choose your uh, champions, please. Choose your Am I right? Is that going to be a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Gumble, uh, pick Namagamedov! Nah, I'm good. Gumble, uh, pick Namagamedov! Do it, Gumble. <laughs> Wait, is it just like only Genesis? Yes, yeah, only Genesis. <sighs> uh... Wait, is, who, who have they picked? They haven't picked anyone yet. Um... Echo picked Paul, but that's not happening. Uh. Look at the roster page. I am right now. Gumble, just Calm do down, Nama Gamedov! Bitch. Uh. Borton. Borton. Big Bort! Wait, wait, wait. Is Manwolf signed? No, he's on Fusion, though. Oh, shit. Yeah, Borton getting that screen time on Genesis. That momentum for his defense against Azrael this Sunday. So, Big Bort. Echo. Where you at? Maury. Oh, Maury wants Big Pierre getting this all-star triple threat. All right, Echo, it's down to you. Why, wow, just ruined Borton's hopes and dreams, Gumbla. Hope you feel proud. I'm pretty proud, actually. Echo's got to pick like a jobber to go with these two. Uh... Oh, Cage, all right. That's a good triple threat right there. <laughs> this All-Stars triple threat. I'll give number going off that promo just for you. Thank you. It's going to be awful. Let me just refresh the page so I'm in time so I can see it. And because Gumble didn't pick Namagomedov, I get to play Bannon's voice through the mic. <laughs> Bannon's official I'll even have voice. Going off open the show. With yes. Promo. Bannon's official voice right here. If he's singer, son, he's like a magician, he is. Like, <laughs> a true magician. Hey, pull my coat off, <laughs> Well, there's no NXT anymore, so that's fine. Pretty sure everyone calls it that. Nah, did I? Do I call it NXT? <clears throat> number? So no, not everyone yeah, calls it. bitch, though. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I thought we were tight, Gumble. Then like you didn't pick Nomagomedov. I'm not picking no Nomagomedov. I not even say his name properly. Khabib. Khabib! It's triple threat, though. We're gonna pit this Team Genesis members against each other. Work out any aggressions. Wait, is no, oh, of course, Pierre Thompson it. is uh, on Team Genesis. Randy Borton defending against Azrael. Zach Cage challenging old bloody Brit for the Anarchy Championship. If you want to find out who that seventh member of Team Genesis is, make sure you check out cmv.com, a.k.a. communityuniverse.formotion.com. Fuck that up. To Gumble, I got the first eight. That exclusive. Done for you. I mean, Gumble, give me two dollars a month to buy CMV.com. I would, but not with. Let's see how it is. Gumble, I'll well, give you. I got. I got the like first. You. I don't know if you know. But... Gumble, I got the first eighteen entrances. What? I got the first eighteen entrances. 
I thought you said inches. Is it? Well, I got that too. All right, kicking off this live event. Just days before validation this Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be hearing from the big Russian, Dmitry Nurmagomedov, a member of Team Genesis in that seven-on-seven -seven tug of war match. Let's hear what's on his mind. Oh, so for Steven Jenab's on commentary. Wait, who? <laughs> Damn. If I could do a Russian accent, I'd do what Borton did last week, and I'd be in a moment. Here's a tweet from there. someone with the handle Abnormal, and it says, An anonymous immortal will save CMB from the injustice it continues to show. Oh, wait. <clears throat> the real G Terry Thurman sitting here on commentary for y'all. Good <laughs> Christ. Where's that? You're supposed to have a lisp. Can you leave? You're not allowed in here anymore after what you did to Azrael. <laughs> you dragged Azrael to the rape dungeon. It's usually the yeah. other way around. I took him straight off the... You know, you know. Alright, shut your fucking mouth. We gotta hear what Demetri has to say. Stop about that, my, my bro. I bet it's gonna be very important. <laughs> I hope he mentions some sort of food. <laughs> He's gonna fall asleep in the ring. <laughs> Like a baby. <laughs> Dimitri never got off who uh, qualified, of course, for Team Genesis by defeating light heavyweight champion Nikolai Ivanovich last week. Look at those thigh veins. He's on the juice. All right, let's see what he's got to say. <clears throat> it's so great to be back here in... Oh, who am I kidding? I hate it here. I bet you hate it here, too. I bet you wish you could be like me and fly on private jets or stay in the best hotels, <laughs> but you're stuck in this dump. I'll try to I try to do that Russian accent. Yes. No. I try to get it off. Oh God. In the CMV, you always oh, have. To, I can't do it. <laughs> In CMV, you always have to expect the unexpected. You have to be ready for something you've never seen. But I promise you, none of you are going to expect what's about to happen tonight. <laughs> I'm taking you all on a wild ride. Maybe the wildest ride CMV has ever seen. This is just rambling. <laughs> I know the CMB universe isn't behind me, and neither is anyone in that locker room, but I don't care. No one has ever been behind me. I've had to fight for everything I've got. Whether you're with me or against me, I'm only in this for myself. What a despicable and dirty heel. It says he's a face. And you know what happens when a star is upset? They freak out. They throw a fit. You don't want me to throw a fit. I will make calls and bankrupt this company within oh seconds. Um, Dimitri's got those connections, this, apparently. This call, Savage brother? Russian mob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I am an unstoppable force of nature, and oh, CMB is going to learn the stuff? hard way that if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to find a way to take it. Trust me, that's the highest score I have ever seen on a promo, too. <laughs> this entire season. Dimitri Nurmagomedov, though, making a statement here tonight. Dimitri he is not to be messed with. Dimitri Nurmagomedov. That was me. The big Russian yes, stating the facts here. So the bullet points are, don't make him upset. He'll throw a fit and bankrupt CMV. And uh, nobody's ever been behind him. It's a good one right there. Classic what? dirty heel promo. <laughs> Unfortunately, no mention of food. So I don't know if no milk. I don't know if it was that good. No dozing off. <laughs> oh, this was CMV. <laughs> All right, let's get into the action. <laughs> Kicking things off with the Misfits. Defeating the uh, thrown together team of Max Black and El Jefe last week. Now they take on an actual Genesis team in the form of Kenji Murakami and Kevin Lee. Power and glory. Who made it to the uh, semifinals in the Tag Team Cup was the last time we saw them before falling out to extreme conditions. 
I hear Xander Slates in the studio. I'm off to smash up two of my road! Xander Slate, British? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Topher's favorite team. Wait, if there's no, is there no a Topher voice in this one? There's a Hayden one, but I don't know there's a Topher one. I invited you like 800 times. Cuck. That you are living. Should I invite Cobros? Get Cobros in here for this dank commentary. There's the big Eck. <laughs> this fucking song. It's, good it's a it's new day. day. Yes, it is. Wait, what's this? Chris Andrews is back. <laughs> uh, no, we're rubbish. Keep my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, Echo's not going to speak until he randomly starts playing uh, <sighs> some sort of song. <sighs> Wait, All right, settle like, down there, I cop. Get that nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear that. <laughs> Where's that click tune? <laughs> Wow, this match is taking a very long time to load. Oh uh, no, we're rubbing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, play that video of the guy reviewing the uh, the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Topher. <laughs> <laughs> Or insane Brit gaming. <laughs> Oven chips. It's a British Fuck your thing. oven chips. The British thing, you wouldn't understand. Chips are fries, right? Yeah. But you put them in so the you oven. Put, don't you put all fries in the oven? Yeah, but oven chips are thicker. Oh, you and, like uh, it thick, huh? There was all these sweet yeah. stuff, and candy, and you know, chocolate, and all the rest of it. And they uh, have these in-store cookies that they bake. Uh, I suppose you <laughs> bake around 9 o'clock in the morning when they're fresh out the oven kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> on display. Anyway, uh, of course, as time goes on during the day, they get the Top cheese. Top randomly sent this to me on Facebook so, uh, one day, and I legit thought it was Topher. I don't know why. They're normally £1.20 uh, for these uh, chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> they had a, uh, a mixture of cookies, uh, various uh, tastes and what have you, changing up probably and stuff like that. So I just instantaneously went for the uh, chocolate chip one. What the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, yeah, five of them. They're £1.20, and um, they weren't fresh off the... Uh, out the oven kind of thing like your grandma would do but the the shit I, I thought well that's a bargain I'll try it and I was feeling uh, it's, it's seven minutes <laughs> seven minutes <sighs> power and glory ready for action where did that towel come from it's the mystery I mean but does Tofu make what your grandma would Go tag team action to kick off this live event. Calm down. Misfits looking to make it 2 0 as they battle the Japanese buzzsaw oh. and the hypothetical kung fu practitioner. Yeah, that cookie review Here's is a tweet. Than Brit versus Shut the Sane. fuck up. 
Here's a tweet from John Reed, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, once again being vocal on the social media. As he says, more of my quote-unquote team fighting here tonight. Seems like I'm the only one willing to work with hashtag dumbasses, and I only joined because I was promised a reward when we won. Hashtag getting tricked. How many hashtags? Hashtag John Reed tricked. is not happy. Hashtag get paid oh, for yeah, what you Hashtag work. getting trick. Get you for pay? What? <laughs> you Zach Hardy you and Kenji Murakami kicking things off. Shut the fuck up, kid. Pissing me off. <sighs> As well, Kenji now, shout out to his now. fellow yeah, Japanese you. competitor with the haiku right wow. there. Fuck out of here. Some waffle we were tight. I have a poster of you. Now Moon walks his way over to tag in Kevin wall. Lee, a two time CMB World Tag Team Champion, Tag Team of the Year. He got alongside old Timmy Boy the Timster. Rip in peace, never forget. Topher. As Zach Hardy now stands face to face with the man who can punch him in the back of the face. He's going to go for a Gord Buster. Sit out Gord Buster, too. Team man bun in a bad way right now. Hardy trying to make the tag to Jace here. Gonna get caught with some Kiwi Crushers, though. A lot of shout-outs to Jamari Williams here tonight for some reason. There's a final one right to the back of the head. <laughs> and here's a tweet from the Brit, guys, who says, Doesn't take much to trick you, does it, mate? Bet you fucked when you see a magician. Wow, in response to a John Ray's tweet. Nice teamwork there by Power and Glory. That snapmare into a uh, uh, no. next snap. Passion, can you say sound, please? Spine. Sound. No, oh, that was sound. Oh, that was sound. <laughs> oh. Just cringe. <laughs> Why do you ask me to say it? <laughs> Get angry. <laughs> I, just remembered. <laughs> I just remembered when you said it, it was disgusting. Uh, no. I just, I will drop the lower Tag to Jace now, finally coming in. The bigger man of the team. The powerhouse going to catch a forearm smash for his troubles, though. Irish whip rebounds right into the arms of Kenji. He goes for a super kick, but misses. There goes Zach Hardy off the apron. Knocked down to the outside. Another forearm smash. And Kenji Murakami with an undisputed forearm, as Cop would so brilliantly call it. Oh, I remember as Chris now, Adams. I remember Chris going to lift Jace up to his feet. Forearm. Oh, kicks to the midsection. What's Jace going for here? Crosses the arm. Shades of Megan Cooper. But bankrupt right there. Megan Cooper, guys, announced on uh, Monday Night Fusion by the champ herself who challenged Jade Divine to a uh, no-holds-barred match. So I'll give you one more chance, Jade. You finally got the pin on me, so I'll give you one more opportunity this Sunday to win the Vixens Championship. So they go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Anything goes rule book gonna be out the window. Oh shit. Also announced going to be uh Void and the Jezebels battling Worldwide Ambition and Quinn Bell, that match we we're supposed to get all those weeks ago. As another tweet here from John Reed, he says, I remember you getting easily tricked by Parker and your title being stolen. So now Chris Andrews just feuding with everyone on Twitter tonight. He's having a good old time. Gotta bring in that punk out championship. Fuck the United States belt. Look at that punk out title. We have Echo Core. Cool. Uh, back to losing now, are we? I don't even know what he said. Uh, back I mean, to losing now, are we? Losing now, are we? <laughs> I bet they it. That's what oh. I heard right there. Must That's what I heard. Wow. wow. I don't speak your language. You freaks. Yeah, we're totally speaking a different Fucking language. Fucking foreigners. Gumble, hey. speak Welsh again. Uh, got another re what are you doing? Lemon Huffy Dashing. <laughs> Did you say Puffy Dashing? And I said I don't like Dashing. What are we wow, Lemon Huffy Dashing? Say Cop likes Black Cock. For me. Uh, I don't <laughs> Big want Cock is in Welsh. GTS uh, there by Kenji Murakami, busting Hardy wide open, go on. Like Cop and Huffy... <laughs> Wait, no. Sounds like saying Buffy. Uh, cock Mauer D. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll do. Just open if we stay really quiet. No one will realize we're still here. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck up, Kai. Where's Echo? Joining and just not speaking as always. 10 out of 10. 
The Misfits realizing they're in a bit of trouble here after Hardy was busted open off that GTS. But Kevin Lee now in with that Fu Manchu and all. Goes for a scoop slam countered by Jace. Going to get off a kick out reverse DDT. Jace going to have to put the team on his back here. As Power and Glory are hungry for their first win as a team. Well, I guess they won the, the first round of the Tag Team Cups. You count that as a, uh, a victory. But going to work their way up the rankings. Extreme conditions of the current champions looking like heaven or hell are get themselves that world tag team title shot out there again beating the champs on Genesis earlier tonight as Jace now scaling up to the top rope. Kevin Lee in position. What is he going for here? Diving a headbutt right to the chest. But My Jace. Dashing. Go on. My dashing. More wankers fell wanky. Hang on. Pause on that note. Oh, wait a minute. Pause on the tweet as well because we get a tag here. The Misfits going for this buckle bomb enziguri combo. Yeah. Put down Max Black and El Jefe last week. And Hardy into the pin. One. Ah, oh, but Kenji Murakami simply too quick for uh, Jace to stop there. Here's this tweet, though, from Chris Andrews, who says, Valentine, you fucker, just sobered up and remembered you attacked me from behind. Bitch, next time I see you, you'll be begging a team up. Together they make the Come on, Topher. Fucking stupid idiot. Lateral press now by Zach Hurdy. Zach Hurdy. Zach Hurdy. After pulling off that sig, but again, Kenji Murakami, too fast for you. Able to uh, make the save as Hardy now scale to the top rope. What's he going to go for here? Swanton bomb to Kevin Lee. Into the pin. Lee is in big trouble. One, two, three. And the Misfits uh, go 2-0. Oh, as Jace is able to stop Kenji Murakami from making the save once more. Yeah, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to apologize. I, I, I uncovered something. I actually just stumbled upon it this morning. Uh... Bloody Brit. It was an interview with Ellen DeGeneres, and now I understand why he's always talking about getting attacked from behind and talking about Paul Devine's ass. Listen, listen closely. First of all, I, I can't imagine uh, how hard that is uh, to keep. It's it's hard for anyone who's gay to come out. It's a very very hard thing to do. You're scared <laughs> of acceptance and, and and all that stuff. But to be in a sport that's so macho, you must have gone to great length to try to to make sure no one would think you were gay. Yeah, I, I, I became the master of playing the straight man. Um, you know, I would go Thanks to the bars well. with the boys. I would always be the one to start a fight. <laughs> um, I would always be the one to be the latest and drink the most. You know, I even went to the extreme of, of marrying <laughs> the perfect woman for me, the, the best person on this planet. Um, I went through to marry her. And, you know, I remember before we got married, I used to go to the church where we did we were due to get married, and I'd sit there in the in the graveyard and look up at the steeple and I couldn't say nothing to anybody and I'd sit there and I'd clench my hands and what just close my eyes as, as tight as I could and just pray, pray to be straight. You know? Pray to be Conor straight. No, no, that's <laughs> Gareth Thomas. <laughs> that's, that's, the that's, the bloody, that's the bloody Brit. Who the fuck is Gareth <laughs> Thomas? That's the bloody Brit. <laughs> fuck you. Oh man, just shitting on Topher tonight. 10 out of 10. <laughs> my dashing and drogi. Speaking of the bloody brute, I have. Right, I um, said I told Topps's you to speak reaction. Welsh once, guy. Yeah, All right. Doing it again. You're smelly. Dog. I have. T I have Topps's reaction <laughs> to the match against Justin Sane. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Enough. What <fuck> is that? <laughs> Topher's gonna hang himself. <laughs> it's time to get into more action here. As <laughs> El Jefe. He's already dead. Here. I don't know what managed to the commentary board, but luckily I'm here to save the day. It actually called oh, action. Oh, Mr. Excitement. Like, right now, we got a beautiful Coming little in. screen going on between El Jefe versus Salvi. And you know what? I'm thinking this is going to be a very interesting match. We look at El Jefe, and you know, immediately I think <laughs> Joe Wrestler, he has this horrible <laughs> headgear on. Because obviously he's too ashamed to show I'm trying face. to hear Mr. Excitement. And then, meanwhile, Salvi, he's got this little <laughs> right gear going on. I don't know why. Like this, like you would think they come to the biggest like, the most people, the people to get their act together and you know just present themselves in their serious professional manner. But El Jefe looks like a joke. Salvi looks like he's some reject. You know what? Well, you're not a this. you're not a fan of either of these guys. 
No, I'm not, because I take my wrestling seriously, and these guys look like jokes to me. And but you know what? This is what the house show is all about, proving guys like me, skeptics like me wrong. So I'll, all, I'll have you know that Salvi here. has a pretty good record this season. I think he only has one loss, and that came in a fatal four-way. Salvi's doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. No one, no one, no one takes you fucking serious. So no yeah, one took takes furious your Frank to the limit as well. You say in a house show match there. a couple of weeks ago. As a big fan of El Jefe, Javi, though, I can't take fatal four seriously. So got to get the argument out of El here. El Jefe, though, uh, a former CMV competitor, never had a, a, an on-screen match in season three because he was it in was that horrible accident. Let's remember. What is he, the boss he was of? in a, a horrible accident, what is he, the boss uh, of? you recall, and was declared actually brain dead. But a uh, miracle, as his family calls it, Why is he, uh, he what would is, come, what is, come back to life. What is he have a fish on his head? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's uh, his face is so grotesque from the car crash that he has to hide it. So he wears his mask kind of car out of necessity. But the rest of his body is fine. So how did the car crash really affect his face? What I, uh, I'd love to hear you interview him. Have all these uh, questions answered. You know what? He's not the kind of guy I want to be there. He's a senior lower level class interviewer. It's like anywhere. Here's a fan question um, that comes to us from a, a guy with no handle apparently. And he asks, what do you think of the potential signees of The Cure? And the criticism they have been getting for people saying that uh, they have gimmick infringement. Possible. Well, that's <laughs> possible gimmick infringement. So I'm unaware of who this man is talking about. Ah, uh, yes, but what does the acronym CURE stand for again? Why does that matter? We're talking about El Savvy <laughs> and the boss about to have this match right now. Before we get into commentary on this match, though, I got one more fan question here. This is a good one. It says, Mr. Excitement, are you with Team Fusion or Team Genesis? Well, I don't care. <laughs> oh, Mr. Excitement, not picking sides. And by I don't care, that's just a way to hide the fact that it's so close that I don't want to embarrass myself by choosing the wrong team. Because that's Mr. Excitement, I always have to be correct. So Can I be Mr. Time. Savage? No. <laughs> or Mr. Well, let's uh, get into this match here. <clears throat> I don't give a fuck. Can I have El Jefe and his uh, his first ever singles match? As like I said, he battles the successful Salvi. Well, uh, Only we one loss. I'm pretty sure. Out here I think he... with a mask. I mean, who is he? And then uh, this guy uh, Salvi. No one knows who he is either. Blonde hair, blue eyes, <laughs> and comes out here with the riot gear on and acts like he knows what he's doing. And then we got a fish who might have, may not, or <laughs> been fucking <laughs> caught on fire <laughs> while he was swimming around. We're not sure. <laughs> he rose from the dead and. Now we got a uh, a match here. Thank you. This is Mr. Uh, non enthusiastic signing off. Happy days. Salvi uh, coming off that victory over Killjoy last week was actually pretty upset that Killjoy got a match with Bob Luger while he's been relegated to battling the likes of El Jefe, a taco vendor, on this line here. Oh, that yeah, was awesome. Yeah, what's up with right that? There. Yeah, what's up with that, huh? What is up with that, Echo? Tell me, I don't book the matches. I don't know. I don't book the matches. Who do you think I am? Johnny Sanson, oh. Dave Turner? <laughs> <laughs> Salvi looking to uh, rain on El Jefe's parade here. He's getting his head rammed into the steel post right now, though. El Jefe is certainly eccentric. See if he can pull off that uh, high-speed butt slap that he uses as a finisher that can put the lights out for Salvi. Oh, nice pendulum backbreaker by the masked man. As now he just stomps right down onto the face. And that big old knee right to the side of the head. Flips him over, shoots the half south. He's looking to finish early on. One, in, two. Go on. In inches, how how big was the knee? How big was the knee? In oh! Inches, yes. <laughs> what a super kick. Salvi's dead. Rip in peace. What is he's not going to do the worm? Yes, he did the worm. El Jefe did the worm, ladies and gentlemen. Hashtag, I can confirm it. Oh, and then a senton out of the corner. Corkscrew senton. El Jefe riding high right now. Nice call. Oh, and now just up on the top turnbuckle. This ain't no thing but a chicken wing, says El Jefe. A walk in the park. 
Salvi trying to get back to his feet right now. He's stunned. He's rocked. El Jefe with a back suplex countered by Salvi into a bulldog, though. Totally going to be hosting Haley. Haley's have Oh, end of days! By uh, Salvi. Something he adopted from his rival Killjoy there. As now he goes into the pin just at two count, though. You know Haley's doing a, a giveaway on the 23rd, I think it is. Okay. Definitely going to be winning it. As Salvi looks Jesus to finish. Christ, Going for that tombstone. Pile driver, the leaping you tombstone pile questions. driver. Crosses the arms. One, two, three, and Salvi gets the win. See, and this is why he should always be on Genesis and not on live. Got to yeah, give it yeah. up to El Jefe. That slick combo with the super kick into the worm. But Salvi with that leaping tombstone pile driver buffs his record. With the worm, if you watch uh, this back in slow motion, he did have a worm in his face when he got pinned with that uh, pile driver. Can you explain exactly <laughs> what you mean by that? Damn. Uh, his <laughs> penis. It was his little white penis was uh, in or around his mouth. when he. How do you know it's white? Uh, I've seen it. <laughs> I see. Not going to lie. <laughs> uh, Mr. Excitement, a uh, fan question here for you. says, how big is Cole Savage's balls? I can only assume, and I'll, I'll go ahead and take this. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this, uh, <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. This is, this is Mr. In, Mr. Unenthusiastic with that uh, answer to that fan question and that. <laughs> the answer is uh, not big at all because all he does is hide in his uh, box up there with his bodyguards and portals and elves, I believe. And every once in a while, a, a, an elf <laughs> will come down and and braid his balls because the ball hair on it is actually quite long and needs to be braided uh, every Saturday morning, actually. Is Mr. Here's a uh... your way of saying that you're sober? Here's a good fan question, though, for anybody or everybody to answer that says, who do you think will be the real decider in the tug of war match? Listen, dude, it, 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 just insane. That's all I have to say about it. Just insane. Yes, Man someone said just insane comes out first to eliminate all seven. Yeah, I, I, I fucking said that. That's, I mean, no, did you, you, you were the one who said yeah, that? Yeah. Quote me, quote me right now. Just insane comes out first. And it's going to be fucking, I mean, it's just going to be We're another fucking again. notch. Another notch on the legend that is just insane. He's going to eliminate every single fucking person. What about you, Mr. Excitement? Who do you think is going to be the deciding factor in that tug-of-war match? As a friend of Cole Savage, I can't answer a question that doesn't involve the friends of Cole Savage. Oh, I see how it is. I think that maybe he'd say just insane since Cole Savage seems to be uh, taking a real liking to Sane these past it's couple of months. Won't, won't leave him alone. They mind games because Sane embarrassed his client. I would say that they had uh, an exchange of words. I mean, Cole Savage has to like Justin <laughs> Sane. He uh, carries around his clubs as a caddy when fucking Justin Sane goes golfing. Let's remember what's on the line at Got Validation. Him. Dave Turner's job. And Thursday night, Genesis of Fusion wins. Samson takes back control of uh, Actually, both remains control of Fusion and takes Genesis, yes? Are you not reading the final question? Dashin, can I ask you one question? Yeah, sure. Wow. Can I close doing a Tofu impression? Can I close the stream? Why is the light heavyweight title? Oh, please don't tell me the titles are fucking glitched out again. Kill me now. Yes. Uh, yes. Lose the title. Uh, why? Lose it. Fucking kill me now. Why does it keep doing that? All right, Nikola Ivanovich leaving his championship at home again. Got it by that uh, <laughs> the fucking this fake uh -huh. one off the street. Who is this guy again? So That's what a causes very the cheap title replica. to do that? I have no idea. I didn't even fix anything last time. I quit the game, went back in, and they were fine. Well, I guess so hopefully Salvi I do that again and it fixes. Salvi shouldn't feel too bad if if this guy, who's the champion, is also scrubbing it up down here on the live show. Well, Nikola Ivanovic, the CNB Light Heavyweight Champion, certainly silenced a whole lot of doubters in Tokyo when he retained his title against Elijah Stewart. 
But then on the uh, the fallout, he lost to Big I mean, Dimitri Nurmagomedov. So now he's going to pick it up here. When, when, when's, when's Big When's Big Salvi going to get that that title shot? You know, I mean, I know he's obviously light heavyweight, and, and he's been he's been looking he's been looking for that that belt since the day he came in. I mean, who who else? I thought is, I mean, Salvi it, said he wants something he to do with the light heavyweight title. He wants to hang with the big dogs. Oh, I mean, correctly. obviously he wants to hang with the big dogs, but I mean, you know, a title is a title, and this guy looks like a scrub to me. Wow. Important. How do you feel about that as the advocate for Nikola Ivanovic? Of course, a member of Rise, but Bob Storm, who was in a little bit of a uh, Rise himself <laughs> in recent weeks after picking up uh, after picking Mike's up a lot dashing. of wins, but <laughs> picking up a lot of wins. But uh, Furious Frank, his former tag team partner, stopped him dead in his tracks by just demolishing him last week on Genesis. So now the uh, Former Fast and Furious member. Looking to pick it up. Over here, both men needing this win. A former world tag team champion here. What happened Frank hold the belt? I think three or four months they were world tag team champions. Pretty decent reign. Not quite the uh, bringer to despair, though. Who? Bringer to despair. Not quite hashtag turning world. Yeah, actually both yeah great, 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 great question. Great question, Dashing. You, you are correct. I don't, I don't, I don't know why they keep feeding uh, these losers to uh, Salvi. Um, you know, uh, I mean, if he does want to, I mean, obviously he's looking at a bigger belt. <laughs> but uh, if he just keeps getting fed these, these, these low life scum, I didn't ask. How is he? How is he ever going to work his way up to a bigger belt it when is. he's just beating? Well, he had the, his the, big uh, breakout match chance against Furious Frank, and he lost. Didn't he, wasn't he in the six-man uh, title match as well? He just lost that. Please. It wasn't a ladder match, yeah, and he lost that as well. I mean, so did like he he's lose, given, he's been given the chances. did he just like not win? Not that I'll tell you who hasn't been given the chance, though. We had that Kaiva guy. Kaiva. Big Kaiva, 3-0. Maybe we'll have to do a Didn't little bit of Kaiba versus so. Salvi next week. You know, that's good. Short arm, shoulder block there by the light heavyweight champion as this match gets underway. Nicola not competing at validation. After, of course, like I said, he retained his title two weeks ago in uh, Tokyo, Japan. Fending off Elijah Stewart. Match had a great this finish. The main event? One of my favorite finishes of all time. Now we got that star set of triple threat still to come. Oh, Randy Borton, Pierre, Pierre Thompson, Thompson, and Zach Cage. <laughs> Mr. Excitement, tell me what you think about these two men. I think... Guy is... Yes, another, another great question. Uh, I don't know who Kaiva is, but Salvi would definitely destroy him. Uh, he's, 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 he's just bigger, better... He's 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 got a new fire in his eyes since losing to Bob Storm. To be honest with you, and uh, Damn, that must have been hot. I mean, he, he he would he would love he would love a rematch. I think, in my opinion, as the advocate uh, to Salvi uh, to show that he can he can beat him, and then hopefully Did Bob uh, Storm beat Salvi. I don't know. That's what she fucking said, dude. I don't know who the fuck. No, I said. didn't. <laughs> Bob Storm didn't beat Salvi. You said no, Bob Storm beat uh, Jem and Jack Connor, and then he beat Dimitri and Eric Medoff. That was that was a couple of wins. So then, who did he lose Salvi. to? Who did you say he lost to? Salvi Clown. lost a fatal four match, and he lost the six man ladder match at Cyberstorm. Jesus I think those Christ. are his two losses. I swear to God, he said Bob Storm. Let's go to the uh, chat. Did he? Did he? Or did I he not say he lost not. to Bob Storm? You said Furious Frank. <laughs> I thought. A Furious Frank beat Bob Storm. Oh, like any last week, so. Nikola Ivanovich certainly big yeah, the yeah. light That's heavyweight right. division. Go, go, commentator Gumbos, because you don't listen when listening is key. Listening to what the fans want, to what the wrestlers are saying, to the way. I'm stupid. I am back. <laughs> Ivanovich scaling to the top rope, the light heavyweight champion looking to take a risk. The quest will it pay off here as he goes for a big old body splash, and it indeed does. And he goes to go for a kick to that chest, but a dragon! Oh! <sighs> Didn't get one of those all night. Had to get a, a nice three, big three. one out. Salvi is 3-3. What's the other match he lost? 
Kill oh, wait a minute! Impaler DDT out of nowhere! Pretty sure he lost the Killjoy. What's the other match he lost? I don't think he lost to Killjoy. He didn't lose to Killjoy. They had one yeah, match backstage that he actually won. So if you want to mark that up for a win. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nikolai Ivanovich gets That's his finisher much. countered. And now Bob Storm looking for the sheer new which he gets off. A big win for Storm here. One. Beat Killjoy. Two. Beat El Jefe. No, just a two count. Beat the guy last week, whoever the oh, fuck he fought. Three. Fuck lost the fatal four way, lost the fucking six man. What was his other loss then? Gotta check right now. Oh, look at that. Moonsault tornado DDT. Pulled off there by Storm. That sure knew he not enough to get the job done, but Nikola Ivanovich certainly hurting right now <laughs> as we get this SPF. And I'm pretty sure he won his fucking now. debut match, so that's. I don't even know what that is anymore. Did he lose to Kobayashi? No. no, he beat Kobayashi. Yeah, that's another win. That was win. his debut match. He won his debut match. Okay. Uh... Gumbo's just trying to find ways. Uh, yeah, no, just Gumbo, why are you such? I thought you were one of the. I thought you were number one <laughs> fan, dude. Damn. I mean, number one fan. What is Storm me. going for I mean, here? Underneath me, obviously. <laughs> he just ran the apron, changed his mind. Storm said, "Nah, not gonna go for that." So I'm gonna get this Hurricanrana off though. Referee had a count of two right now. Uh, Topher, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sounds to me like he's trying to say Topher's real dumb. Storm letting his aggression show right here. Oh, he lost to Furious Frank. We literally mentioned that like ten times tonight. He lost to Frank. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Echo, about, yeah, how about that feel like question, he, I feel huh? like we said that and you were like, no, Bob Storm lost to <laughs> Furious Frank. Echo, no, I said Salvi lost to Furious Frank. Bob lost dude. to Furious Frank, too. Oh, my God, dude. You, you're, you're fucking losing your shit, man. Oh, you are losing your shit. I think you're just dumb. <laughs> TBH. Fam. As Nicola's <laughs> trying to turn this match around. Bob Storm in control for most of it. Oh, showing off them muscles. Must try to take old Bobby's head off in the corner. Not Topher. Mori didn't the make Salvi. Press. One, two. My good fucking friend, two. who I deployed with twice, made him. Okay, and he's a big fan of Kane, so he wanted to give yeah, him. Yeah, Topher. He wanted to give Whoa. him the same fucking attributes. Kane is a cool troll guy. call. Mighty roar let out by Storm. Rolls out of the way of that action roll by the light heavyweight champion. Oh, but Storm catches him with that vintage shit out face buster. I'm gonna Actually, bust I'm the wide best open. on comms, by the way. Ivanovich could be in big trouble here. One, two, just a two count. The light heavyweight champion remaining mm -hmm. alive somehow. A blue four, this blue three this over. Oh, but once more, Bob Storm hyping up the crowd as he goes for a Shiranui. End of the pin. One, two. Three. Oh no! That's Ivanovich with that clutch kick out. Hey, what? Eating two of them, but still going in a second at Paler DDT. Nikola needs this win. That gash on his forehead looking real nasty mm. as he hooks the leg with just a two count. <laughs> and now the light heavyweight champ once more gonna size up Storm. We know what he's looking for, that rolling cutter. But again, rejected. Just can't get off that fin to save his life. So if I'm going to assume storm. that you're just kidding with that comment, then I'm not going to. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just I'll just sit here and. <laughs> oh, Nikola Ivanovich talking that trash. No. Oh, there's such aggression behind that slam down onto the mat as he grabs him by the mask, lifts him up to his feet. Ivanovich with a snap mare. Xbox, record that! Oh, the cops are coming to get me. <laughs> Punch the ribs now, goes for a spinning soul kick, puts Nicole in the corner, shining wizard of the bulldog. What a combination there. Storm up to the top rope. Ivanovich just straight stays jobbing weekly and then winning at the pay per views. <laughs> oh, Phoenix Splash! But Nicola was out of the way. 
What the fuck? Oh, what a boot! <laughs> by the champ! <laughs> you okay? Yes! Yes! <laughs> what a match! What just happened? <laughs> Mr. Excitement, why don't you take the commentator from here? Finish off this match for us. Actually, I can't because my water is. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because Nicole is going to finish it off as he finally is going to pull out the rolling cutter. Straight into the pin. One, two, three. And look at that. Nikola Ivanovich won a match. Certainly hard fought. <laughs> Surviving two Sharanui's to come back and finally get off that rolling cutter on the third attempt. <laughs> if I wanted your opinion on what devalues and values a belt, I'd ask Gumbel. I'd scrape it from my fucking zipper. Yeah, after you after you blow me. <laughs> What's the point? Get it? <laughs> Xbox now. Nikola Ivanovich getting that win that he very much needed who's going to be next to step up and challenge the serbian for his mouth <laughs> one of those ones and now it's time for this all-star triple threat match me. ladies and gentlemen the uh genesis team members colliding <laughs> As up here, Thompson, we know, part of Team Turner. Team Genesis in that 7-on-7 seven -seven tug of war match. Randy Borton defending the international title against Fusions. Azriel and Zach K is going to be challenging the bloody brick Chris Andrews trying to bring the Anarchy title to Thursday nights. But for now, they're going to take out their aggressions on one another. Borton, who was kicking off the season with some fire under his ass, 8-0. But that was ended by Pierre Thompson last week, one-on-one -on -one in the main event. Zach Cage been riding a high, currently on a four-win streak. Let's see if he can keep it up. Pull out the uh, the Vic, the big Vic, the big one, two, three, uno, dos, three. But like Echo's bum chum Tim, they city like little fucktards. I don't know what that, that means. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I I'd rather have fucking Tim <laughs> as my bum chum than you, you fucking English fucking fuck. Damn. Didn't say British. Called you, called you English. Actually, the English are the best bum chums. I can confirm. Their bums are nice and firm from all the squats they do. It's like Thank nice you. Thank you, Chris. The quality that they have is not like that flabbiness you see. It's like, you know, they actually take real good care of the bums. They Thank you. Like it's nice and firm, and you know what? I'm yeah. not gonna complain. I'm jealous sometimes because you know I look at mine, and you know I slap a little bit, and you know it shakes a little bit. But when you slap theirs, it's like it's nice and firm. It's like a rock, you know. Like you can break your hand. Hundred percent. That's why I respect everything that they do to this. So when you make fun of British for being bum chums, you know it's like you never touch one of their bums, Echo. So you know what? Why don't you just shut your mouth? Things you know nothing about until you go to England and then go touch everyone's bums there, and you see how wrong you are. <laughs> Make sure, Simon, how do you feel about Zach Cage finally mustering up some serious momentum? Like, oh, no. performance. Oh, I'm going to be cut off. Don't ask me questions. <laughs> well, this Sunday it won't be Zach Cage's first time going for that Anarchy Champion. I think it'll be his it's nearly three years, same big career. I think he's probably had four matches. For the Did Anarchy he Championship. The most recent the was uh Yeah, he said Zach Cage has been in every single serious match type in CMB, just never won way. He's been in Chambers, fought for the world title, money in the bank, king of the ring, 
Cyborg Invitational. Was he in the side? I don't think he was in the Cyborg Invitations, actually. Wow, so you But uh, Zach Cage has pretty much seen it all, done it all, but it hasn't won it all. Not a single championship to his name. I was going to say the last time he challenged for the NXT title, I'm pretty sure it was homecoming when he when he uh, fought Jacob Ziegler. And that was quite a while ago. Oh. So Cage certainly getting a win over the international champion in this triple threat match. That big old momentum boost heading into validation. But the Moo Moo Man, the Milk Man, the King of the Rang. Going to try to get his record back on track. Make it nine and Juan. Get some revenge on Pierre Thompson here. Oh, does this count towards the, the win-loss? Because Cage is going to win it. So. I also think Big Board's going eight and two. Oh, yeah. No faith in the milkman. I mean, you know I've always been a huge fan of, of the Cage. A big fan. Zach Cage's number one fan is Echo in the front row with the Cage sign. Is it the front? Not, not <laughs> just the sign, oh, wait, why but is, the tattoo why and is the shirt. Spell? Okay. Okay, I guess that's good that it's only the light heavyweight championship, then. Huh. Borton's title's A-OK. -okay. I've got a tattoo on my chest that says, let me in your cage. <laughs> and here comes primetime Pierre Thompson, who since coming to Genesis after losing that loser, leaves the brand match to old Xander boy at uh, Cyber Slam, kicking it off by defeating Bob Luger and last week pinning Randy Borton in the main event, getting Pierre Thompson a slot on Turner's team. See if they can keep it up here. You want to talk about serious cause? How about that shit share that you made, uh, Tops Newson? I mean, he beat Justin Sam this debut. You mean that uh, senior citizen early bird special, Tops Newson? <laughs> I just hear something. Good thing you put that mask on him. That's all I gotta say, Topher. Big fan of Topps Newsome. Someone say troll call? What did he crawl out of the fucking sewer? <laughs> Get back to the sidewalk, you fucking troll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Pierre Thompson. Ready to get a win over the international champion again and the number one contender for the Anarchy title. As here he comes, Echo's on his feet. He's got he's got his uh, Zach Cage foam finger out. About to mark hard. Oh, it's not a foam finger. It's a foam penis. It's a brown a finger because he can he been sticking up Zach Cage's behind. Boom. It's a round thing. I said brown. <laughs> I said brown. It's a brown thing? Yeah, why, why would it be what? brown? I don't even have a... I'm not even black. So even if it was like a, a penis, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense. What, am I Zach putting Cage a turd back into that, his ass? Uh, What's going on yeah. there, Mizzy? Zach, <laughs> Zach Cage dropped that pipe bomb last month after uh, kicking off the season with a loss. Zach Cage said, I'm tired of being held back by the powers that be and striking out on my own. I'm done. And uh, certainly has backed up that talk. This four win streak he's on. And a chance to become the Anarchy Champ this Sunday. Uh, this fan question says, it's not a question. This fan statement says, Mr. Excitement, please give us your best Topher impression. I'll get you covered, don't worry. My all right, I said, stop asking me questions if this club is going to interrupt me. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm saving this to close the show. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Randy Borton, Pierre Thompson, Zach Cage. This all-stars triple threat matchup to cap off the stream. That fan waving in the front row. That's Topher. I got a fan question. You been in any contact with Brett Angel recently? Is that directed towards me? Uh, it was, no. <laughs> well, you gotta specify, bitch. No. Nah. As for Andy Barton with that forward front Russian leg sweep, Zach Cage right back to his feet, though, brings the knee to the chest as Pierre Thompson just, what, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> <laughs> bitch, that's what I thought. Sure, Thompson not having to do anything, just, what? <laughs> 
cross arm bar by Zach Cage. Pierre Thompson's just taunting this entire time so far. As Zach Cage and Borton go out of Irish whip off the ropes. The international champion going for that single leg drop kick. Shades of Cole Savage. But uh, he did not hit it. Not a true Savage fan. So here comes Pierre now going for a sidewinder oh, suplex. Something like that in honor of Cole Savage. And you hit it and he win with it. Or you don't do it at all. Yeah, Borton. Fucking scrub. Borton, are you Get good, kid. Oh, double knee backbreaker there. Legend Kyle Dottie. Cage boy and Pierre Thompson having to roll out of the ring to recuperate as Morton continues his assault on Zach. Lifts him up to his feet. The Moo Moo Man, the Kang of the Rang, with this front headlock. European uppercut drags him off to the middle of the ring. What we got here? Mishinoku. Oh, high angle dick grab slam. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Randy Borton been international champion since the start of the season. Going well, on two months now after he champion. captured it on the Genesis season premiere. And that triple threat retained it twice. Says he's going to make it three when he battles Azriel this Sunday. Oh, here comes the Moomoo Man pandering to his milk and maniacs, brother. As Thompson shoots for a takedown. Zach Cage deflects it. Here comes Borton from behind. <laughs> he eats the enziguri, saving Pierre Thompson. What a nice guy is Borton. Just taking the bullet. Stalls the suplex. Borton into one of his own. Shut the fuck up, Borton. Fuck you, Dash. All right, how about you don't talk him by the that. What? Come on. respect for one of your champions. I don't respect, respect anyone. The Least of all you, bitch. Put it on fucking main show. Tell me what to do. Go for that double knee backbreaker a second time. Pierre Thompson saw Yo, it coming out. Get rid of Vicky. Takes him overhead with the belly to belly. You still not have room for your champ on your main show. Yeah. I mean, Vixens were never on Genesis to begin with. No, that just sounds real dumb to me. <sighs> Randy Porton actually wasn't even booked. Okay, oh. who booked? Who chose Porton? It was Gumble. Me. Yeah. Gumble put Gumble on the live event. What? You fuck. Gumble put I put on myself. The live event. Oh, that's I mean, real dumb. I don't care how there's, what, six, six fucking matches in the main show, and none of them were the championships. Kid. Every match has to be for a championship? No, not for a championship, but I would expect the championship uh, champions to like, be on the show. You know? Extreme conditions were in action. Yeah. Nice. Well, are you saying Randy Borton has to compete every week and I can give him a week off to just relax? Trying to Maybe. work him? Borton deserves a day off, all right? No, he doesn't. Wow, Borton, how you feel about hey, that? A day off or a week off? Jesus, man. You saw that play of the day, though, there from Pierre Thompson. Now Randy Borton rolling out of the ring. This is Pierre's chance, and he knows it, sizing up Cage. Pierre's chance for one. Going to try to get off that highlight, baby. Into the pin. One, two. Oh, Borton with that clutch breakup. Very last millisecond there. Sliding back into the ring. I don't know what Zach Cage is doing over here. Pierre Thompson put in the corner. Borton looking for that revenge. Cage just continues to taunt over and over again here in the corner. Pierre Thompson now rolling out of the ring. Zach Cage has to snap too as he takes down Borton with that. I still don't know how to pronounce really Meteora. Meteora. That's how you see it. Okay, I said it right then, bitch. That I didn't say you said it wrong. I, I copped your attitude, all right? All right, but what's the difference between the torch rack and the accordion rack? <laughs> Big old leaping elbow drop right there. Just avoid in the question. The sweat from his hair. There is no difference. It's the same move. Chris is just dumb. No, I'm not getting into this with you again. <laughs> Zach Cage lifting Borton up to a seat. Pierre Thompson back into the ring, though. I'm gonna break things up between these two. Oh, some teamwork from Zach Cage and Pierre here. Double super kick, double into Gurry. Rip and peace, Borton. As Cage just putting the dirt. Oh, goes for the Superman punch. Borton says, fuck out of here with that shit. Zach Cage from behind now. Dragging Borton off to the middle of the ring. Going for that German suplex counter by Randy Borton with an arm drag. Zach Cage trying to get back to his feet. As is Pierre Thompson using the ropes to help him up. Irish whip into the corner. Pierre Thompson with an elbow drop. An elbow drop. Close on to the back of the head. Randy Borton just got styled on. As he rolls out of the ring. Close line either. Oh, here comes that stump puller. Pierre Thompson looking for the tap out here on Zach Cage, who's the expert 
submission oh submission expert here in this one the expert submission expert <laughs> <laughs> the expert submission specialist I was trying to say there got mixed up a little bit oh schoolboy super kick to Thompson as Borton's just getting back to his feet can he make another big time pin break up is going to be it one oh, just a one count and Borton's angry that he broke it up yes yeah, I'm Cage got that force shield activated. Counters the back suplex step with a nice bulldog. Pierre Thompson getting to see Zach Cage with this taunt over and over and over again. Did you have a match? Only gonna your calls out a match. Elijah. Oh! Yeah, he was there for that. Pierre Thompson again going for the Superman punch. Borton counters it with a half and half suplex. Cage now out of the ring. Borton in the corner. Tuning up the band for that sweet. Moo music kicking Pierre's oh teeth right God. down his throat. No, but Pierre counters it. Turns right around as Borton into a front headlock, but Borton counters the counter to counter the counter. Mori, you're back just in time. Plus, it's 1999 up in here. As Zach Cage to his feet, doesn't need to break up the pin though. It's 2016. Up on the ring apron. Goes for a drop kick. You tell him, Gumball. fan question. Oh, nice color oh, breaker to the door. arm. <laughs> <laughs> Lateral press by Zach Cage here trying to finish things off on Borton while Peter's indisposed. I am going to ignore that question. Why? Because I don't want to answer it, Gumble. That's why. That, why? that means yes, you don't want to put your champions on the show. <laughs> why don't you answer it, Gumble? I don't know the answer. You do. I feel like we do know the answer. Uh, I don't even oh, know he's Randy asking. Randy Borton getting off a punch to the midsection. Thompson to his feet, slides back to the ring, but Borton going for oh, it. Okay. Moose yeah, yeah. Thunderbomb yeah. cage deflects it. Yes. The J uh, the fight Borton's chance title here. will be introduced. There you go, Dash. And the uh, punked out championship. Yeah. Thompson oh, no. now shoots the half. Prime time trying to wrap up this triple threat match with just a Perfect. one you count. You better not be asleep because I need you to hear Say my good. ending one of the show. Say a good one point nine 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 nine. On Pierre, in the corner, man. Randy Borton out of action, looking for a second highlight here, and he's gonna get it off. Could this be it? Oh, Borton, Borton, no, another clutch ass breakup. Oh, I don't even broke that up. I think Cage just kicked it. Oh, he's gonna go for another highlight, but Borton says nah. Puts him in the corner instead. Zach Cage sleeping on his feet. I don't know what Cage is doing right now. He's going to get a modified suplex into the turnbuckle. The turnbuckles. <laughs> and now Zach Cage. What's he trying to go for here? He checks for a submission, but Borton counters. And Borton with the go-home driver. Zach Cage in trouble after getting hit with that highlight. One, two, three. And Randy Borton with the win. Ask me to close the show. Borton back on track. Nine and one, baby. That go home well driver planned. always wrapping it up for Borton. He's ended like five of his matches this season with it. That's my pleasure, Sean. <laughs> Zach Cage's winning streak comes to an end. He's pinned in this triple threat. Pierre Thompson not involved in the decision. The Moo Moo Man going in his title defense. With a win on his side. That go home driver does the deed following the highlight. Good one, Gumble, you fucking moron. Important get lucky as usual. Let's take it in, man. Randy Borton arms out wide <laughs> to wrap up this stream. No, this I'm Sunday gonna be validation. You are not gonna wanna miss it as always. If you like what you saw, you wanna see more, make you sure you it. follow me. And uh all, all the past episodes. Dashing. Can I, can I do my thing? You guys shut the fuck up. All right, all, right, you all the past episodes are on my YouTube there. channel, which is linked on my Twitch info page. If you would like your call on the show, all you have to do is type exclamation point CMB and exclamation point Jordan in the chat to get a hyperlink to our website. Follow the simple steps to get your call on the program. Validation is this Sunday, as I mentioned earlier in the stream. I was going to try to do it a little bit earlier to avoid going too far into uh, Roblox, so probably four or five. I'm going to start the stream 
So uh, join the set, like I said, if you want a more precise time. So yes, let's close things up. Echo, are you still here? You got anything to say? No, I ain't got shit to say. I'll be lost. I'll be lost. He's upset. He's he's about to hang himself because Cage lost. All right, what about you, Gumbel? What's on your mind? Um, I just want you to show the champion some respect. You know? I want you to fucking off yourself already. All right, what do you got to say, Mr. Excitement? Huh. And last but not...